Yes, they can. Awesome. I've got the timer reset here. You guys just let me know when to start. Oh, I, I know when Let's Go starts. I've played Let's Go. <laughs> let, me, let me back out. <laughs> All right, so we both need to set our clocks here. Uh, actually, yeah, if they can hear us, then we should intro ourselves. Um, I'm Etiquette. I'm on the left side. I'm running Eevee. I'm Kerbis. I'm on the right side running Pikachu. And I'm JS4, and I'm not running either game. <laughs> Moral support, PogChamp. Moral support and endless wisdom. <laughs> Something right. like awesome. that. All right, so right before we started, we both just set our clocks. Um, no RNG manipulation here on the Switch, but this is going to be used for something a little bit later on that we'll explain when we get there. Relatively minor stuff. Yeah. One of those things, even if you forget it, it's really not that big of a deal. Okay, I'm ready on my start screen. And I am ready on mine. All right, you want to give us a countdown, Josh? All right. Three, two, one, go. All right, first thing we're going to clarify is we are not racing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is we're working not together a race. here. Uh, it's basically the only chance we really have in Pokemon to do like a cooperative run as opposed to a race. Uh, this is going to be a run to catch all 150 Pokemon across both of our games and both of us will complete the Pokedex. Um, uh, right before we started, I added a chat command to uh, let people know that. So if at any point people have questions, you guys can type exclamation point diploma uh, to get like a brief explanation of what this category is both of us will get the diploma however both of us will not complete the game <laughs> yeah it's a it's actually a really cool like routing challenge to to realize that uh there's only like four pokemon that actually require you to beat the game um and as long as one side gets those pokemon then the other side doesn't actually have to do that so uh one of us will be doing the, the game and the post game and the other one will be stopping at basically four badges. So the way it works out is we're both on our own going to catch probably just under 100 Pokemon and then the other 50 or so is going to be traded between us. Oh, we need to be careful not to say the, the, the trade code too early, otherwise people will snipe the trade. True. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Uh, everyone, don't be mean. Don't snipe the trades. All right, let me just get my switch out really quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's not like we don't have a super secret channel for only runners to talk. True. We'll, uh, we'll put Josh on code assigning duty. Oh, actually, are you, are you even in that channel? I don't know. You can DM it to us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, either way. Kind of baffling that this game doesn't let you just trade with your Switch friends. You have to put in a code. Uh, yeah, actually, that's a good question in chat. So we are not... In the same location we're nowhere near each other right now so uh all of our trading and stuff is going to be online it's one of the things that really made let's go specifically like really cool for this kind of thing um because everything can be done over the internet you don't have to be physically next to each other like you would have been back in like the gen one through three days yeah i remember the first time i asked you about doing this run you're like, yeah, that sounds cool. We we could do that sometime eventually in the future when we're in the same place at the same time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I was like, nope, internet. Yeah, well, because 
It was something I had actually tried to do once on on Generation 1 with shenanigans. Um, and so, like, we had to coordinate it at AGDQ one year. But, yeah, this you can just do whenever. And it really, like, this category has sort of skyrocketed in popularity over the last six months. Um, more people run this than any percent right now. <laughs> yeah, actively anyways. Uh, there's a lot of people who would call this the best or most fun category of this game. It's a very cool category. All right, so we're both grabbing our starters here. Um, starters are gonna have perfect stats. They're not gonna have perfect natures necessarily. Um, I didn't save before mine and I honestly don't care too much what my nature is. Um, it'll slow things down a little bit if I have a bad nature, but it's not gonna be like unrunnable, so. And the focus of this run really isn't the battles, um, it's really the catching and the catch luck, so if I do end up with a bad EV, it's not the end of the world. Um, I think the stats in Pikachu are a little less restrictive anyways. Yeah. It's... Even if you have a bad nature, it's probably only gonna cost you a couple minutes at most in this game. So it's not too big of a deal. Yeah, I know with Pikachu especially, you're going to be higher level than you are in a normal run as well. Yeah, so. yeah, also true. Yeah, so normally we say the worst thing you could get for Pikachu is minus attack. And I've done diploma runs with minus attack, and it pretty much works out just fine. Yeah, in Eevee, Eevee minus attack is pretty bad too. Um, but... It's at least, like, doable, because a, a lot of things you're not one-shotting anyways, you're two-shotting, so at worst case, it goes from a two-shot to a three-shot. Um, special attack can be kind of important, speed can be kind of important, but both of those are, you know, able to be mitigated if, if we absolutely have to, so not too concerned about the stats. It's good to know what your stats are, but I'm not going to reset over it. I think I just saw about seven encounters on Route 1. I had a bunch, yeah. So, we're going to catch a lot of Pokemon, but I avoided all of those Route 1 encounters because there's a time and a place for everything <laughs> that is pretty well planned out. Oh, yeah. Some things you can get whenever you see them, but for Tatas and Pidgeys, we have better places to grab those. Uh, and because I know people will ask this as well, uh, we are both keeping track of our Pokemon trackers uh, directly below the, the game feeds. Um, we're both usually pretty good about marking stuff, uh, but there's always a chance that we miss something. But yeah, so in general, it's going to be uh, blue means we don't have it yet. Yellow means we do. Uh, there may be some extra colors that come into play with like, um, like a darker yellow, meaning that we have it and maybe we want to trade it away or something like that. But um, Usually, it should be pretty obvious to figure out what the um, the colors all mean. All right, so first rival battle. Pikachu has a harder time here than Eevee, um, just in terms of like uh, dealing enough damage. However, Eevee has the chance of getting uh, growled by the Pikachu and also getting paralyzed. So. Um, Judging by the amount of damage I did on turns one and two, I believe I am at least neutral attack, so I am all set. <laughs> I think I'm plus defense. Oh, we both got female starters? That's kind of funny. Yeah, Pikachu has like a mostly consistent four turns. Occasionally it can three turn in that rival fight. I think Eevee can do as well as a two-turn, but can also go horrifically wrong. Yeah, for a for a two-turn, you either need to have plus attack, or you need to get a 1 in 16 high roll, two turns in a row, and don't get growled. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's possible, but not very likely.
so I'll find out here on this fight what my nature is, or I'll at least find out if it's a good nature or a bad nature. Just based on my stats when I level up. Yep. And Eevee doesn't level up till the next fight, so I have to wait. Yeah, the opening rival fight, the Pikachu gives one less experience than Eevee does, so you figure out a little bit later. It's so funny. I'm definitely not <laughs> minus attack or minus special attack, so we're in the clear. It's funny, it's literally one experience doesn't get us to level six. <laughs> That's just number one on the long oh, laundry man. list of reasons Here why we go. <laughs> why Pikachu is better than Eevee. <laughs> no, if anything, it shows you that Eevee's better than Pikachu because Eevee's experience yield is higher. Boom. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> it also shows you that Eevee's resets are 40 seconds longer than Pikachu. Shh. Don't I, tell anyone. I, I just got to... Let you know, Etiquette, that you're you're in a two v one situation here. We're Pika oh, boys. Oh man, why did I agree to this? <laughs> oh, there's already a Pikachu on my screen. That's really good. So even though Kerbis has a Pikachu, um, and I have an Eevee, we have to catch more because we can't evolve these, and we also can't trade them. So, um, he'll already have the Dex entry for Pikachu, uh, but I need it, so I have to catch one, and then we both need it for Raichu. So, uh, one of us will evolve it and trade it to the other one. Uh, so finding Pikachu in the forest right away is actually really good. Yeah, this is the only place in the game where you can find wild Pikachus. Alright, I think I'm plus special defense minus defense. I might be wrong, but I think that's right. I think that's what I saw as well. I saw 18 for special defense, and I think I saw 13, and it wasn't in attack, so... Alright, so uh, we don't have webcams, so you can't see it, but all the catching is done via motion controls in this game, uh, as most of you guys know. I used a raspberry there before throwing at the Pikachu. Uh, it increases its catch rate a little bit. Pikachu is kind of a difficult catch to get, so um, using the raspberry there is pretty nice. And something we'll do a lot is we'll use two controllers to catch Pokemon, throw two Pokeballs at the same time. And that makes our chances of catching things better, but some things you can't use two controllers on, so using the berry can help in those situations. Yeah, you can only use two controllers if you actually have two Pokemon, and Pikachu is my second Pokemon, so I didn't have one yet. Yeah, you're going to pretty much always see either of them use two controllers to catch Pokemon, just because you get much more experience from a two controller catch and the catch rate is much better so why docked instead of handheld that is actually an excellent question um when you're playing in docked mode you gain quite literally half as much experience as you do if you do a two controller motion controlled catch one of the multipliers you get with a catch is uh your technique bonus or your synchronized bonus technique meaning uh, you use motion controls at all, and synchronized meaning you use two controllers and um, synchronized your throws. So we're going to be gaining double the experience. This run would be a lot worse if uh, we were playing in handheld mode. All right, yeah, in handheld mode. Also, handheld mode lags like crazy, especially here in the forest. <laughs> yeah, the forest is the laggiest spot in the game, for sure. Just because there's so many Pokemon that can spawn here at the same time. Yeah. Alright. So that doesn't really come into play too much in this category since we're catching a ton of things anyways, but the, the main game actually requires you to catch 50 Pokemon in order to make it all the way through. Um, there are gym requirements, 
and one of those requirements is to catch 50 Pokemon. So um, even if we weren't doing a catch them all, we would be catching these Pokemon, uh, specifically these bugs. The bugs are really nice because there are three Pokemon you can get relatively quickly. We get them at level seven uh, when we use a lure and you know they fully evolve by level 10. So that's six Pokemon that we can get almost for free right at the beginning. Yeah, the reason this run kind of works so well in this game is because since you're already catching 50 Pokemon per 90% run, uh, you don't have to do anything too crazy to extend that to just kind of catch all of them. Usually just requires you to hang out a little longer in some areas that you would otherwise run past and visit a couple extra areas, but not really many. Yeah, pretty much everything we need to get is, like, right along the way. Um, the only real exceptions are, like, the big dungeons that you don't normally go to, like Power Plant, Seafoam, stuff like that. All right. So um, I'm not sure where Kerbis is. I'm making it here out of Viridian Forest. I don't have a Bell Sprout yet. Um, and the gym requirement to enter Brock's gym is to have a Grass or a Water-type Pokemon. Uh, so what I'm going to do is basically walk in and out of this door until I see a Bellsprout. Uh, Bellsprout and Bulbasaur are the only two Pokemon available that satisfy the requirement. Uh, however, Bulbasaur is a uh, very rare spawn that we're going to talk about those probably later on. <laughs> yeah, rare spawns end up making a pretty big difference throughout this run. So, Yeah, we something. actually... We don't even know how rare they are. We just know they are rare. Yeah. <laughs> they show up probably less than 1% of the time, but it's hard to tell sometimes. But yeah, they show up less than 1% of the time, but there are ways to um, increase that those odds. Um, but those ways, of course, can be kind of slow. All right, so my two bugs are evolving. Got my bell sprout. I got to level 10. Level 10 is important in Eevee because it gets us the move double kick. Um, Pikachu doesn't... Well, Pikachu gets double kick at level 9, but it really doesn't matter if it gets it early enough because uh, I believe you're not even going to be using Pikachu for the first battle. I'm not. I'm already going to ditch my Pikachu temporarily. <laughs> temporarily. Yeah, you'll, you'll probably notice that I'm going to be doing things like uh, avoiding... There's a Pidgey, I think, and a Rattata that are spawned in this grass. I'll be avoiding those. Um, in general, the, the general rule of thumb is you want to be catching Pokemon that are, if they evolve, that are very close to evolving. Um, you never want to go more than, like, I think four levels is the most that we go um, when we have a choice. Uh, something like Paris, you know... The only place we can get Paris is at level 11, and it evolves at 22, so or 24, so we have to level it up a ton. But in general, if we can avoid it, we want to make sure we're only leveling up one or two times per Pokemon. Yeah, that's it's like Rattata. There are tons of places later in the game where you can catch it, and it'll evolve in one level. So you pretty much always want to avoid it early on. All right. Oh, doors are hard. All right. <laughs> so now we get to see the true champion of the Let's Go Pikachu games in Oddish. Yeah, one of the reasons that it's, or one of the big differences in the early game of this is that both games have a grass type to deal with Brock, but because Bellsprout is a physical attacker and Brock's book one have very high defense it actually ends up being better to still use your ev with double kick against Brock. whereas with pikachu since oddish is a special attacker you can just use absorb a couple of times and Brock goes down very quickly all 
the only thing that can go wrong with Oddish is this Onyx is faster, so and it has the move Headbutt, so it can flinch you. I once had a fight where I got flinched three times in a row from the nice. Onyx <laughs> and almost died. Yeah, the nice thing in this game is that, or for a speedrun at least, is that you can always bring out a second controller if you need to, to kind of save yourself in a pinch or use a potion or something. Which can be helpful in this category, especially if you get into a tough fight, since usually you just want to get through the fight so you can get some more catching for this. So I don't know if Etiquette's going to do this, but there's an item I can get here. We can babysit a slowpoke a little <laughs> bit, and we get a big pearl out of it. And that's going to be the first of many just money items I grab throughout this run. So since Pikachu isn't completing the game, and we're only doing four gym fights, and we're generally just missing out on a lot of money that you would get from fights by completing the full game, I pretty much need to pick up as many money items as are available to me. Yeah, I'll probably be skipping the Big Pearl. Um, in general, yeah, because because Eevee's sort of blitzing through the game, we don't need as much money. It's almost like an any percent run with a couple of extra steps. Um, and there are some other money items that I can grab a little bit later on. And I fell behind because Eevee isn't as good as Oddish on Brock, so I want to catch up because this is clearly a race. <laughs> You'll all see one day that Oddish is actually the most overpowered Pokemon. Um, okay. Oops, don't need ice heals, nothing can freeze you. I hope I get frozen this run, that'd be funny. So a really great thing about this game is you can get X items super early. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, X items raise your stats by two stages in Generation 7 and above. But because this game is based on some of the older Kanto games, they still have the price of the old original X items that only raised your stats one stage, so they're very cheap to buy, and they also have the much better power up that you get from later generations. Like so X, X items are generally kind of overpowered as is, but in this game they're just disgustingly good. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're also available in every Pokemon. So like if you think about Sword and Shield, for example, um, X items are only available in like two different places. Uh, but in this game, there every Pokemon has them once you have one badge. So, um, already got an Ekans, which is really nice. Yeah, in some games, the the different Pokemon sell different items, but in this game, it's purely dependent on how many badges you have. Every shop, every normal Pokemon shop, will have the same stock of items. All right, so Ekans is the first, well, I guess technically Bellsprout's the first, um, Bellsprout and Oddish are the first two version exclusives, but Ekans is the first one where we don't have a way to actually get the evolved form, so one of the two of us are going to have to evolve it. Um, because Ekans is only available in Eevee and not in Pikachu, that means that um, if I were to evolve to Arbok, Kerbis would never get the dex entry for Ekans, so I'm going to keep it in my party to start leveling it up, but I'm not going to actually evolve it. We're going to trade, and he's going to get the Ekans before I evolve it. That way he gets both the dex entries, and then he'll give me the Arbok back later on. Yeah, so similarly, that Mankey I just caught will do the same thing with it, because that's one of the Pikachu Virgin exclusives. Um, Brock's TM is the Rock-type move Headbutt. Uh, <laughs> not a rock type move I don't know why he gives us headbutt but headbutt's really nice for Eevee uh, gains same type attack bonus so uh, our headbutt is going to be a very powerful move effectively it's over 100 power for Eevee 
Just um, casually a 70 power move after the first gym of the game. Yeah. Uh, Pikachu learns Headbutt as well, and it's going to be useful, but it's not like it's not as useful as it is for Eevee. It's just so broken for Eevee. Add a pod to level 10, so that's Butterfree. Yes, two-player mode does cost two Pokeballs per catch. Um, I actually mistakenly sold all of my Pokeballs. I was trying to sell Pokeballs and buy Great Balls, um, and I was supposed to spell most of my Pokeballs, not all of them. I did sell all of them, so the Ekans I had to catch with two Great Balls, but... Um, one of the nice things about this game is some of the wild or the trainers in addition to giving you like reward money will give you reward items and like the girl i just faced gives me a pokeball so now i have pokeballs to use in the second slot it does require a little bit of extra menuing but not the end of the world yeah with the second slot thing one of the things you may notice is that in all of these catches we're only using the good ball on the first slot that's because the ball that's being used by the second slot doesn't actually matter at all the game only takes into account the first slot. I got a really quick Clefairy. Hopefully it stays in. I saw an Onyx already. Ooh. <laughs> so, there's a lot of stuff we... It's very concretely planned, like who's going to catch what. But Onyx is kind of one of these toss-up Pokemon that it's not super rare, but you're not guaranteed to see it either. So we kind of just say whoever sees it first, catch it and trade it to the other version. And I got it first ball. Onyx oh, is actually a really hard catch. That's so. really nice. Holy crap. Yeah, that's convenient. I'm just looking at the stream right now. The layout looks really cool with like the the two dex counters and everything. I like it. Um, I could have just caught that, but whatever. Uh, we're going to be basically going into our box a lot throughout this run to deposit stuff and manage our parties. Um, you gain a lot of experience for catching Pokemon. So having a Pokemon that doesn't need to gain experience just sitting in your party while you're uh, catching things is a, just a waste of time. So I try not to do it when I only have one Pokemon to deposit, but like that time I had three things I could get rid of. So um, it made sense to get rid of it then. So you're going to see me start to mark things like a dark or blue color on my tracker. That's just to help me keep track. Um, those are things that I'm going to be receiving from Etiquette later, it's just so I know not to catch them. But generally, like we said earlier, anything yellow we have, anything blue we don't. All right, so just making sure, Paris, I'm not evolving, right? Um, Paris, you are evolving. I'm not evolving. Okay. So I actually have a, just like a screenshot of a tracker that I use when I do these runs that tells me pretty much everything I need to know about trades. Because it's it can be hard to keep track of, you know, 150 Pokemon, what you're doing with all of them. So I have a tracker that is just like marked a bunch of different colors and tells me what to do with Pokemon. A nice reference. Yeah, I know I always keep a second tracker open that I use specifically for keeping the traits somewhat balanced. So that's one of the hardest things in this run generally is trying to make sure both games have the same amount of things to trade. Yeah. So there's a lot of weird stuff that has to happen to make the trades even. Uh, the biggest thing we do is on Pika version, 
since Pika has a lot more things naturally that it wants to trade over, because I'm exploring a lot of other areas that Etiquette will never go to. Um, I wind up just catching Pokemon and not evolving them, and then Etiquette will trade me the evolved forms of them. Now I'm done with all my catches here in Mount Moon. Got all my money items and other things. Finally make some progress here. So one of the big things that we're trying to do uh, through this section, in addition to just catching a bunch of Pokemon and stuff like that, um, is we're trying to hit level 15 by the time we exit Mount Moon. Uh, usually, if you catch everything that you need to, you're going to be pretty close. Um, if you get kind of unlucky with some of your bonuses, things like maybe you missed the first ball or you didn't get an excellent throw, you might struggle. Um, but I just hit level 15 there, and I still have three fights left here in Mount Moon, so... Or four fights, actually. Wow. Um, so that's pretty good. The gym requirement for Misty is to uh, have a level 15 Pokemon, and doing Misty first saves a little bit of time. So I'm trying to farm for a Clefairy right now. I'm not going to wait too long for this. I actually despawned one on accident, but... I'm going to try to get one. Yeah, this is a technique you'll see quite a bit throughout the run, is walking up and down ladders. You already saw Etiquette do it for a Bell Sprout in Route 2. But loading and reloading the area is usually the fastest way to respawn Pokemon if it's available. Yeah, because especially when you have a lore active like I do right now, uh, you uh, will pretty much get three or four immediate spawns every time you reload a new room. So it's a really convenient way to just force spawns. I'm just going to try a couple more times here. Worst case scenario, Etiquette can trade me his Clefairy later, but I kind of want to avoid that. Yeah, the, the other thing that's kind of nice about this run um, is, in general, Pikachu at the end is going to be basically waiting for Eevee. So if Pikachu yeah. is, if yeah, if you're struggling a little bit right now, it's really not the end of the world because, uh, you know, that's sort of that time that you would normally be waiting at the end just brought back to the beginning. I've accidentally despawned two Clefairies now. I'm so mad. Oh. <laughs> no, I just did it again. No. Okay, we're going to wait until four spawns show up. <laughs> I'm not leaving without a Clefairy. Now it's personal. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I didn't one-shot the Magnemite. Wow. Wasn't even paying attention. Yeah, that Magnemite is very rare to not one-shot when you're level 15 already. Uh, which fossil should I grab? Helix, okay. Helix. That is a very important uh, clarification to make. We uh, we need to pick different ones. In this game, you technically could pick the same one, um, and I could get the other one in Cerulean Cave, but there's no point because that would just be a waste of time. <laughs> All 
right, so here's Jesse and James. Um, really the only, like, true double fights in the game. There are going to be other double fights that we do, um, but they're not supposed to be double fights. <laughs> they're ones that we cheat in. So I just realized that I didn't pick up the second moonstone in here, but I can skip it. It's fine. You can grab the other one. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're doing the single player catch them all run, there's you have a problem where there's only three moonstones available in the game and you need there, there are four Pokemon that evolve with Moonstones. So you either need to kind of cheat with your clock to get a fourth Moonstone, or you have to catch a 1% encounter at Clefable. But the nice thing about Diploma is that since we can kind of share those responsibilities, we don't got to worry about that. We can each just grab two Moonstones and evolve two things and trade them to the other player. Chansey. I'm not going to catch that. So Chansey is one of those special spawns we were talking about, the really rare ones. But Chansey is the special spawn on almost every route in the entire game. So the odds of me seeing one later are pretty high, and Chansey gives you a lot of experience, so I want to wait to catch a Chansey until after I get a Dratini, which needs to level up a lot oh yeah yeah and the nice thing about chancy is even if for some reason pikachu side or eevee side i guess doesn't get a chancy or see a chancy later chancy is about a 10 percent encounter in cerulean cave so worst case eevee can just pick it up at the very end all right so here in cerulean city is one of the biggest reasons why this run sort of like, or just any percent in general works the way it does. Um, I'm teaching a bunch of moves to my Eevee. Um, Eevee has eight special moves that it can learn. Um, and only your partner Eevee can learn them. There is one for every Eeveelution type. So here we get the, the three ones from Gen 1, uh, Electric, Water, and Fire. Um, these moves are completely broken. Uh, Eevee gets some really powerful moves um i've got 90 power moves all across the board uh, one of them will always paralyze the opponent one of them always um is like a absorb or mega drain or something like that so it'll increase your hp uh one of them always inflicts a burn so it's really useful uh pikachu does get those moves as well but gets less of them and they're less good <laughs> Yeah, for the speedrun in particular, Eevee winds up learning four of the special moves, and Pikachu only learns one, so... Eevee gets a lot better type coverage, and it means Pikachu needs some help along the way. But, yeah, one of the, one of the actual nice things about Pikachu in that respect, though, is it doesn't waste as much time as Eevee does learning all those moves like that's an extra like 20 to 30 seconds of me just learning moves that Pikachu doesn't have to do um so even though I'm saving turns on battles uh Pikachu saves that time that uh it doesn't learn those moves so it ends up it doesn't like even out but it ends up not being as much of a like a lopsided battle as it could be yeah, and Pikachu does still get uh, Thunderbolt just from leveling up, which is a pretty good move. So it's not completely devoid of good moves to use. Alright, so I still want to try to catch a Sandshrew, and this patch of grass I'm going to come up on is the last place it's available. I don't have to get it now because we have to come back to Cerulean City later but I'd like to get it now, if I can. I'm just gonna wait for maybe two more spawns or so, and if it doesn't show up, I'll move on and grab it later. So yeah, if Eevee didn't have the broken moves, this Misty fight would be a whole lot harder than it is. Um, 
Because it always paralyzes, we can guarantee that we outspeed the Starmie on turn two and don't have to worry about setting up as much as we would otherwise. Like, we'd probably need 2x special attacks otherwise to be able to one-shot. One of the things that's a really nice contrast between this game and, like, other Pokemon games is because the focus of the game, like, the game in general, not just the speedrun, is on catching, a lot of the battles aren't really too difficult. Like, even the the typical difficult battles, things like rival fights or um, gym leader battles aren't too bad. Uh, a lot of the focus, a lot of the places where runs will die um, and where your optimizations are, are on those catches, so... It's sort of like a different Pokemon speedrunning experience. Um, and this category just amplifies that with the, uh, you know, just so many catches. All right. So this move Pikachu got called Zippy Zap, um, it always crits. That's like its little perk. Probably not as good of a perk as some of Eevee's special moves, <laughs> but it's still pretty strong. It also, it doesn't have as strong of a base power as Eevee's moves either. So the fact that it crits all the time isn't maybe as good as it sounds. The other thing it has is that it has positive priority, so it usually always hits first. I think oh it yeah, it has it plus two hits. priority. Yeah. Which Pikachu is already pretty fast as it is, so I don't know that the, the priority really helps you too much. But I think there's a couple spots where it actually does. Yeah, I think there's maybe a Kadabra later on that outspeeds you. But I'd and have to actually check. I know Giovanni's Persian does. Yeah, the Persian does outspeed you. Persian is stupidly fast. All right. And Pikachu generally doesn't have any problem one-shotting Starmie. One of the slight advantages it has over Eevee. Yeah, the, the stat system completely changed in Pokemon Let's Go. Um, it was reverted back to the way it was in Pokemon Sword and Shield, but um, rather than gaining EVs, you have what are called AVs. Uh, I think they're awakening values. Um, and AVs are... You can think of them as basically like added values. So every time you level up, you gain one AV. That literally just adds one to whatever stat uh, it chose on that level up. Um, so a lot of times, because our starters all have 31 IVs, we know how our stats are going to grow outside of those AVs. So something like that Starmie, for example, as long as you have like two or three AVs in your attack stat, um, then you're guaranteed to one shot. And even if you don't have any of those AVs, like it's still a decent range. So it's usually favorable. Yeah, I think. You have to be level 15 and have one or fewer AVs, I think, for it to be an unfavorable range. Yeah, it doesn't really happen all that often. Yeah. In addition to AVs, there are these things called candy that can you can feed to your Pokemon. Um, to basically force you to gain an AV, and those are completely broken. We don't actually use them in the speedrun because they actually take a while to get um, and to use, but if you had enough of them, you can basically boost any of your stats by 200 points. Um, it's completely busted. Yeah, just too hard to get for the speedrun. We did use them a little bit back in the early days of speedrunning this game. Yeah. But quickly realized that it's pretty slow. Yeah, for the catch-em-all categories, every once in a while, if you're 
Starmie later on is not very good. You occasionally have some candies that can just make it a little bit safer, but it's usually not necessary. Yeah, it's usually one of those things, if I see those candies, I'm like, ah, I'll just feed them to them, why not? <laughs> uh, because you can get candies by sending Pokemon to the Professor. It's sort of this game's way of releasing Pokemon. Um, or you can get them just by catching Pokemon. Sometimes, like, a high-level Pokemon or, like, a, a powerful Pokemon is going to have these candies as rewards. Um, so sometimes you end up with just, like, a random assortment of candies, and depending on which kind you get, like... If I have a special attack candy, I may as well just feed it to the Starmie because it'll be a little bit useful. Yeah, there are some very specific endgame ranges that are nice to avoid, but they don't matter that much. Alright, so at the top of this route here, uh, I'm looking for only a Meowth. Um, I can always come back for it. I need to come back to this general area later. I would like to get it now, though. Um, mostly because I'll forget to get it later. <laughs> yeah, there's so much to keep track of. Odds are that one of us is going to forget a couple things along the way. Like, I've already forgotten to pick up a Moonstone. There's just so much stuff going on, and especially when you're trying to talk the whole time. It's, it, you lose track of things pretty easily. Right, I'm going to run away. Try to get those to despawn. Uh, this is one of those places I don't have a place I can just go to reload. So I sort of have to walk far enough away for them to despawn, which I didn't walk far enough, apparently. Yeah, Meowth is another one of those fairly annoying catches that only shows up in one spot in the entire game. So there it is. Etiquette had to get it right here. No, I don't want Pidgey. Get out of here. Meowth is also another one of the version exclusives, so... This one little grass patch in Let's Go Eevee is the only place you're going to find it for this entire speedrun. Alright, that wasn't too bad. Um, and this Meowth here, in my opinion, is the reason why we have the games the way we do in terms of Eevee is the game that's going to be beating the game and Pikachu is the game that's going to sort of like hold back and catch a lot more Pokemon. Um, there's a trade, almost, event in the game, I guess you could say, where um, there's a lady in Vermilion City who um, really likes the Pokemon Meowth and the Pokemon Growlithe. And in Let's Go Eevee, if you give her, if you catch five Meowth, um, she will give you an Arcanine. Arcanine usually being a version exclusive. Um, Growl Growlithe isn't available in Let's Go Eevee, um, but you can get an Arcanine from the lady. And then that's flipped in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. So if you catch five Growlithe, uh, she'll give you a Persian. So. Both Arcanine and Persian are very fast ride Pokemon. There's no bike in the game, so you have to ride Pokemon, um, and they're very fast. So what we do is we have the game that holds back do that little challenge, catch five of the Pokemon and get the, the ride Pokemon, and then trade it to the other game, so that way we can go a little bit faster. Um, and catching five Growlithe is just a whole lot easier than catching five Meowth. Those Meowth are just so hard to get to spawn, and Growlithe spawns in basically like an open field. <laughs> yeah. There's like six grass patches or something on that route that Growlithe can show up anywhere, as opposed to just this one tiny little patch. Other than that, though, there's really no reason why one game can't go to the end and the other one stays back. Um, it's just that one little routing decision we have. Yeah, you could easily take this route and reverse it and just do everything the opposite way. And it it, def it works. It's just slightly slower. Yep. All right. Um, I didn't mark Meowth, did I? Where is it? There it is. Oh, uh, forgot to skip a cutscene.
So I'm catching Psyduck and Venonat right now. Um, I don't know if Etiquette saw in either of those on this route, but he would not want to catch them because those are some of the things that he's going to want to evolve and trade to me later. And these ones are still really low level. Since I don't want to worry about evolving them, I can just catch them now because I can see them. But both of them you can catch in better places later, but they'll only take one level to evolve. Yeah, I actually saw both of them before I saw my Meowth. I was kind of upset. For me, it's just adding to my crazy early game experience I'm going to wind up having. Yeah, we talked earlier about how Pikachu's nature doesn't really matter a lot, and that's because you get all these extra early game catches that you wouldn't normally pick up in the any percent route. Along with four extra Growlithes. So, so by, by the time I get to the SSAN, normally in an any percent run, you're level 18 or 19. In this run, I usually wind up being level 23 or so. <laughs> it's crazy. And I'm basically running the same route, I guess you could say, as far as the fights go as a 90% run. So you just wind up really overleveled for that section. All right. Grab the Nanab Berries here. Uh, like Raspberries, Nanab Berries have an effect when used in battle or in a wild battle. Um, some Pokemon like to move around. Like they'll either sway side to side or they'll move more erratically. Nana berries are a way to sort of stop the Pokemon from doing that, stop them from attacking. Um, and I think it increases their catch rate a little bit, but not quite as much as a raspberry. So we're only going to use it on like a, a select few Pokemon. All right. So going through the underground tunnel here, there are going to be a few money items I can pick up. Um, this is actually why we set the clock before the run. Um, we set the clock to be 11 p.m. Uh, and if you notice, we're around 50 minutes into the run now. Uh, all of these items are going to respawn at midnight. So by going through the tunnel before midnight and then running back through it after midnight, we can actually get two sets of money items. Um, it's less important in Eevee, and I actually might be a little early to make it happen, but um, in Pikachu, it's definitely useful. And we can use this to respawn other things. Um, we mentioned earlier uh, respawning Moonstones in Mount Moon. Uh, that can be useful. It's not very useful for this particular run, just because we have access to six Moonstones between the two of us, but in a single player run it's very useful it's good in any percent too uh it's it's a really tight window but if you can manage to get the clock to change over while you're in the one little tiny room where the moonstone spawns in any percent you can wind up getting two of them sometimes yeah i actually <laughs> i had a clip where i had the clock roll over to midnight during the jingle of the first moonstone and was able to get a second moonstone off of it Yeah, the timing is very tight. All right, there's a Vulpix. I'm like, where are the things I actually want to catch here? <laughs> um, but because of the, the little clock reset there, I actually don't mind dilly-dallying a little bit here. Um, just because it will net me a little bit extra money, which isn't necessary for the route, but does give us a little bit of safety because we can buy a few more Ultra Balls. All right, so that's Vulpix. Not going to evolve that. There's an Abra up here. I'm going to try to grab it. It's like on the ledges on Route 5. Oh, okay. I hope it doesn't despawn by the time I can get over to it. Yeah, Abra oh. is one of those Pokemon that can be somewhat frustrating to find. There are a lot of different places that it can spawn, but it's fairly rare in all of them. And if you approach Abra from the front, it will despawn on you, so... What Sometimes. was that throw? Okay. 
That was one of the weirdest motion wow, control I just works saw that. I've <laughs> ever seen in my life. Looked over just in time. All right. Yeah, so. I think. Go ahead. No, I was going to say 95% of the time, or 99% of the time, the motion controls are good in this game. Every once in a while, something happens that just makes you wonder. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Uh, so doing a big shop here, um, I had to be careful that I didn't accidentally sell the fossil. Uh, selling the fossil is something we do in any percent because it actually sells for decent money. But we need to revive the fossils here, so that would be bad. No. There we go. So buy a bunch of X items. This is going to get me through pretty much like the middle of the game, um, almost all the way to the end, and then just buy as many great balls as I can. Lots of catching coming up, and catching of things that we don't normally catch, so they have a higher catch rate, or a harder catch rate. Who's winning? Thanks, Warteb. I'm winning. I'm ahead. <laughs> Depends on how you're looking at it. Because how many Pokemon do you have? I have 15. I have 19. No! So I think that means I'm winning. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> We're all winners here. Yes. So also with these underground items, one of them is static. Like this nugget is always a nugget. But the other ones are random. They could be pretty wings, which aren't very valuable. Or they could be like another nugget or a big pearl like I got back there. I got two big pearls from mine. I got a big pearl and a pretty wing. Uh, at least that's okay. <laughs> yeah, in general, in this category, the money items don't matter too much. It's just more that you have them. All right, so now I'm going to catch my five Growlets. It's a very fun time. So I'm going to be on this route for a little while. Uh, all right, guard spec. This fight's kind of awkward. Uh, this is the rival three fight. I am slower than the Pidgeotto, so I'm going to use Buzzy Buzz there on turn two in order to uh, make it slower than me and also try to take a little bit less damage. Um, uh, this is bad because I have bad defense, actually, so I need to heal. Um, Pikachu is going to get a turn, and it uses Double Kick, which is super effective, so that would be bad. hiding from me. So there's a mechanic in this game that sometimes works in our favor, but most times does not. In this case, it's going to work in my favor, but whenever you catch a Pokemon, if you're still on that same route or on a route where that Pokemon can spawn, they'll be more likely to spawn. So now that I've caught one Growlithe, um, the other four should show up a little quicker, theoretically. Theoretically. It doesn't always work out as nicely as you would hope it does. But since every other Pokemon in the game we only want to catch once, that actually does not help us. <laughs> Definitely hurts more than it helps. There's one but, Pokemon later on that you have to catch that shows up a few times. Mm -hmm. And that's Eevee. Oh, True. yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, so Eevee is a fairly rare spawn, so it's nice that that one shows up more often. Uh, what I just did there, I always find cool. To, to remove the possibility of you, like, dying on the boat, they made it so once you do the, uh, the whole sequence where you get the chop down secret technique, uh, they deactivate all trainers and basically mark them as defeated. So we can run right past those two gentlemen to grab a nugget. Uh, normally you have to fight them, but we can just run right past them. All right, so this is where things are going to start really deviating for the two of us. Um, Kerbis is going to be doing a lot of catching here. He's going to go over to Route 11 and get a few things. I'm just going to continue on with the story. Um, so I am leaving here without catching really anything. Um, and it's going to basically be like this for the rest of the game, uh, where he's either going to be behind me in terms of like location, or he's going to be somewhere completely different. Uh, actually, wait, what time is it? It is... I probably could get through, but let me just see if... There, look at that. Jigglypuff spawned. Perfect. I'm right at the one hour mark almost, so I'm just gonna wait a little bit to get the money items. Ooh. I almost said no to teaching Thunderbolt. Ooh. All right, I don't... Okay, I do evolve Jigglypuff. I can do that. All right. You know, that wouldn't be the first time that you've said no to teaching Thunderbolt in a marathon, Rob. It wouldn't. That'd be pretty funny if it happened. In a really sick and twisted way. All right, yeah, so now that it's been an hour uh, since the start of the run... The money items have respawned. Okay, there's Growlithe number four. All right, I got two pearls that time. That's not too bad. Just a little bit of extra money. Just teach Thunder at 30. Easy fix. You're right. Just fight Surge, okay. <laughs> Fighting Surge is not as unreasonable in this category, at least, because you can get a Rhyhorn from Eevee. True. Right, yep. Yeah, it's definitely not ideal to do it that way, but... Pikachu can recover from not teaching Thunderbolt in this category. Alright, so... a bit of menuing here. Um, I'm going to evolve Jigglypuff. I'm actually gonna... The Pokemon that are in like a darker yellow are gonna be Pokemon I'm trading over. That way I just don't get confused. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So I have Persian. We're also going to wind up trading three or four times throughout this run. The first of which is going to come up somewhat soon. What's the actual trigger here for that save? Just so I make sure I know. Um, We need Rhyhorn. Rhyhorn, right. Okay.
Yeah, this trade is kind of funny. It's basically once we both have a ride Pokemon, we trade those ride Pokemon, so that way Eevee, Eevee can go even faster. Um, we can't get a Pokemon that's in that fastest, like, ride Pokemon tier until uh, Pokemon Road, basically, which is Route 17. So uh, getting one now just saves a little bit of extra time. Uh, yes, so Dark, Yellow, I'm assuming this is the same for you, Kerbis, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but Dark, Yellow are Pokemon that we are planning, we have and are planning to trade to the other person, and Dark, Blue are Pokemon that we are going to be receiving from the other person, just so we know not to get it. Yeah. So, like, actually, I could mark these two, for example. Um, like that. All right, here's Route 10. Uh, this is a one of the bigger catching sections of the run from Route 10 into Rock Tunnel. Um, however, everything that can spawn here can also spawn in somewhere else. So if I don't happen to get everything, I can get it later. In any percent, you that's really not true. Um, but in this category, all these things spawn on Route 23, which is right before Victory Road. So I can always get something then if I have to. The one exception to that is Krabby. Yes. But if Krabby isn't obtained, then Pikachu could just pick up Krabby and that works out fine. So there's one catch. Uh, that's actually the most important catch for Pikachu to get. Uh, Pikachu's really going to want that Nidoran mail. So. Ooh, still got the excellent there. That was nice. Yeah, I will not leave Route 10 without getting a male Nidoran. One of the most important catches in the game. Pikachu really needs, or the Pikachu side really needs Nidoking to deal with Hideout and just in general, some of the mid-game stuff. Uh, it can also use Nidoqueen as a support Pokemon, but Nidoqueen is significantly worse than Nidoking. Ooh, I got Krabby. Nice. There's actually one fight where Nidoqueen is better than Nidoking, but the rest of them, it winds up being slightly worse. A lot of the rest of the fights. Yeah, it doesn't make up for the fact that it's just bad still. And it's like not even better than Nido King, it's just more likely to have the best outcome, but the best outcome is exactly the same. That's the hypno fight, right? Yeah. Alright, so two things I still want to see are Nidoran female and Rattata. Rattata literally doesn't matter, I can get it almost everywhere. Uh, but Nidoran female would be nice to get. That's a Nidorina. All right, there's a Rattata. We know War Tab and we appreciate it. We'll be so say much slower. Yeah, it's it's honestly not that much slower to use a Nido Queen. Probably 15 to if, 20 seconds. If things go right. Yeah. So what I'm looking for now is a Mr. Mime. I think it's a 5% spawn on this route, and this is the only place you can get it. So this is one of those examples of things that I'm just going to hang around for until it shows up. While Edkit keeps pressing on. Once again, using the entrance of Diglett Tunnel here to uh, get rid of all the spawns on the route so I can get fresh ones. Oh, I actually don't have a Rattata yet. I'll catch this one. Actually, no, I won't. It's 
so. Oh, there's the Nurin female. Wow, I actually got all five things before fighting the, the rockets. <laughs> That's convenient. That never happens. The reason I did not want to catch that Rattata is the same reason I said earlier, where if you have caught something that it exists on the route you're on, it'll be more likely to spawn. Since I want Mr. Mime's chances of spawning to be as high as possible, and currently my catch chain is on a Diglett, which does not spawn on Route 11, uh, Mr. Mime will be more likely to spawn than if I caught that Rattata. And 5% isn't terribly rare, but it can happen where you're waiting quite a while for a 5% spawn. Yeah. I know my very first all-attainable Pokemon run I did, Mr. Mime took about 15 minutes and it almost turned me off the category completely. Yeah, that's insanely unlucky. Yep. Yeah, and like, 5% is bad. There are a couple of 1%s we need to get to, so it's, uh... <laughs> I, uh, I had the perfect perfect storm of things happen yesterday. I was doing an offline practice run, like, just an all-obtainables run, just to get a feel for catching and stuff again. And I walked into Rock Tunnel, and a Kangaskhan spawned on top of me, and then three throws later, it ran away. Yeah, so that's the thing that can happen. <laughs> can't run away from you. <laughs> And it's really heartbreaking when it's a 1% spawn that decides to do that. So I have my Mr. Mime, or assuming it gets in this ball, which it did. So that's good. We can leave here now. Alright. Yeah, speaking of 1% encounters... The first 1% encounter of the run is Kangaskhan, which shows up in Rock Tunnel. Yeah. So, Kangaskhan is one of those things that if Etiquette sees it, he'll take it, but otherwise it becomes Curvis's job to sit there and wait until Kangaskhan spawns. Yeah, I get the joy of, of grinding for all the 1% encounters in this run. I have one. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. Penther and Scyther are version exclusives, and they're both 1% encounters, so Eevee has to get the Pinsir. And those are arguably the worst 1% in the entire run. Yeah, they're, they're the big gatekeepers of getting a good time in this category. So nice of Game Freak to give us two 1% encounters as version exclusives. So it can't even be one of those, like, both of us go through the area. If one of us sees it, it's good. Um, all right. So, oh, that's perfect. All right. I have a Rhyhorn on my screen. Okay. Okay. Um, let me know when you've caught it. I'm, I think I'm just going to do this rival fight, actually. Yeah, that's fine. I, uh, after. I am basically right in front of the Slowpoke guy, so, um, I can easily just do that fight, too. I'm just starting the dialogue for the rival fight now. Wartab, I don't even know if I have a good answer to that question. <laughs> what is the stupidest belief we had when the month, the game was one month old? I feel like we had a lot of them. There were a lot of them, for sure. I think this game is just so weird compared to any other Pokemon game before it that it took us a while to kind of wrap our heads around what we were supposed to be doing to go fast. Yeah, I think I think my honest answer to that question, Mortab, is that we thought the difference between Eevee and Pikachu was as drastic as it is time-wise. Like, obviously, yeah. they're very different routes, but, like, I think we thought it was closer to, like, five to ten minute difference at the time. Oh, my God. And it's nowhere close. It's, like, 
It's like less than 30 seconds for sure. Yeah. All right, I'm catching a Graveler now because I think you're still in the fight. Yeah. And I also forgot until I was in the middle of the encounter. All right, I have to make sure you're not riding Rhyhorn. Yeah, I'm actually going to throw Rhyhorn in my party real quick. That way we can do Rhyhorn for Persian and it'll okay. just go to my party already. All right, so Graveler was a one ball catch, so that is good. I'm gaining a lot of levels, sorry. I'm just talking to the... Actually, yeah, talk to the guy. I have to... I have two things that are going to evolve from this catch, too. So this just wasted a ton of time. Yeah, Warte, that's what I mean. Like, that was the problem, is everybody focused on Eevee, so nobody really gave Pikachu a chance. I think one of the issues is that Pikachu was a lot worse than one controller. Oh, yeah, so absolutely. Okay, are you ready for the trade? Um, I have to go through the dex registration for the Graveler, and then I should be good. Okay. Uh, let me get... I don't know if having a second controller out matters, so I'm just gonna do that. Quickly throw the Rhyhorn into my party over... I don't know. Uh, Radicate. That's fine. Alright, Josh, give us a trade code in DMs. Alright, hang on. I checked last night. I have Nintendo Switch online, so <laughs> we're good. That's a good sign. All right, you got the code? Yeah. All right. Go ahead and put it in. Dude, this music is the best part of the run. <laughs> True. <laughs> we spend a lot of time in this menu, so it's a good thing the music is good. All right, do the ride first. I ever even marked person in my tracker. I did not. I didn't mark Rhyhorn either. <laughs> okay, so looks like I have I think seven things I can trade to you after this. I have a I have a round that because like you you need things like Radicate and Fero, right? Because you're not going to evolve those. Yeah. All right, yeah. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things I could give you. So okay, perfect. that's good. Uh, but I'll make sure I give you things like uh, Ekans first. Okay. This is unironically one of the most difficult parts of the run. Yeah, because not only are you trying to figure out what needs to be traded, but you're trying to remember where those Pokemon are in your box like one of the most difficult menuing exercises in all of Pokemon speedrunning. Yeah, like I'll, at the end of the run, I'll actually, the Pokemon box has a sorting option. I'm actually going to sort by like dex number or something just so I don't have to spend forever looking for stuff. Um... What are you giving? Oh, drowsy. Okay. Like you just. I'm, also, I just I'm having a hard time with the tracker because we we made our tracker a certain size to fit the layout for the yep. marathon, <laughs> and the Pokemon are in different places than what I'm used to. Yeah. Oh, actually, one of the Pokemon I would give you is Graveler, which I can't give you right now. So. Yeah, actually. That actually works. Perfectly. One of mine is Kadabra as well, and I can't give you that, so that works fine. You oddish. Um, I think Bulpix is the only thing I need to get you that has to evolve. So everything after that is just dead weight. 
So I can send you a Growlithe, an Onyx, and Mr. Mime still. All right, I have Raticate, Fero, Meowth, and Wigglytuff. Okay. Not that I expect you would, but I'm going to give you Wigglytuff. That way you don't accidentally evolve into Wigglytuff too. Yeah. Good call. I already kind of have it marked, so I, we should be okay, but you never know. All right. I'll just give it to you next. Yeah, one thing we haven't mentioned yet is that there is a man in between Saladon City and what used to be Cycling Road. One of Professor Oak's aides will give you 30 Ultra Balls, but he'll only do it if you have 40 Pokemon entered. So doing this trade early is also really nice because it helps, it makes it much easier for you to get to 40 Pokemon. Yeah. That's probably the biggest reason to do it um, behind getting the Persian to EV version faster. Yeah. And then the third reason would just be to break up the trades so that we're not doing <laughs> 50 <laughs> trades all at the same time. Yeah, I mean, like, it ends up being smart for a bunch of different reasons, but it's like almost like we routed around making sure we spread out the trades. <laughs> Yeah. Which, like, the more we looked at the route, the more we realized it's kind of just necessary to do that. But at first, we were definitely just doing it because we didn't want to do them all at the same time. We still wind up doing, like, 30 at the same time later. Yeah. I think. So yeah. Like 20 to 30. You can't really avoid doing a giant trade at some point. Right. But you can at least make it more bearable. All right, this is going to be the last trade then. That's what now. I was going to ask. All right, perfect. I'll be sure to use Mr. Mime in battle. You can use it as your fairy type sacrifice. Oh, I actually could. Oh, maybe yeah. I'll do that. That'll be fun. <laughs> Mr. Mime is definitely the best fairy type sacrifice in the what, game. What a phrase, fairy type sacrifice. I've never considered that. I love that. <laughs> All right, that's happening. That's the hot catch them all only strat. All right, who gets the error this time? I got out. Not me. Oh, sick. We both got out. So sometimes you can both get out at the same time, yeah. All right, I had a very long black screen. I was very worried. This category is unfair to people who don't have friends. Um, that's a fair point. I'm sorry. You're not wrong. Nugget. Nice. All right, what do I want to get into my party? Um, I need this in the party. Um, okay, put that there. All right. Well, ran into that by accident, but it works. I actually wasn't even paying attention to the last item I picked up, but I feel like I just got triple nuggets. Whoops. I don't know why that ball went the way it went. I blame Zubat for that one. Oh, right. You didn't get Sandshrew. I was like, why didn't I get Sandshrew from that trade? Yeah, I don't have one yet. Oh, I could have traded you Diglett as well. Oh well. I heard. I think I heard Charmander. No, I didn't. It's Cubone. Okay.
Oh, I never marked Diglett. That's why I didn't think the trade you Diglett. Ah, that hit the circle. I call hacks Game Freak. Service, don't forget to ride Rhyhorn. Oh, I meant to do that in that menu. I was too distracted by Diglett. See, the joys of running the Pikachu side of this is that you can just be a choke artist and still not cost actual time. Because I'm going to wind up most likely finishing before etiquette regardless of what I do. Unless I get really unlucky on 1% spawns. But there was a Charmander at the top. I just despawned him. Oh, no. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but... Yeah, it saves a little bit of time to get a Charmander. Oh, that's annoying. Yeah, getting Char or Charmander in Rock Tunnel is nice specifically because, or because it comes at level 24. Whereas if you were to grab the one in Route 25 from the guy at the top of the route, you, it comes at level 14. So it's a minor difference. Also you can also get it much later. So you're you're getting a Charmander earlier at a higher level. So just yeah. make, it makes getting a Charizard a lot faster, but it doesn't actually save you any time, I don't think, other than the actual level ups. Yeah, it was like up against the top wall of the the main area that we grind for encounters. It was up against that top wall, like in a corner. I saw it as I went up the ladder. Alright, so, so I kinda glossed over it, but this route is one where Pikachu needs help. Route 9 is miserable with solo oh, Pikachu. Yeah. So I'm using a Kadabra here. You can also use a Growlithe pretty effectively. Um, you can use a Pidgeotto semi-effectively. It's not great. But ideally, you want a Kadabra or a Growlithe to help you get you out on this route. Dude, there's a That's Kangaskhan crazy. on my screen. It's, it's, on a, it's on a trainer, but oh, it's, a, man. it's a Kangaskhan. <laughs> Did I see that correctly? Is Pikachu 60 attack and special attack? Already? You did see that correctly, yes. Wow. Is that good? I feel like that's good. At level 25? That's pretty solid for level 25, I think. It's more solid if you forget the level and just say, on Route 9, I have 60 attack and 60 <laughs> special <True>. attack. Because <laughs> again, uh, normally by the end of that fight, I'm like level 20 in an any percent run. Yes. You got a Krabby, right? I do have a Krabby. Um, should I not evolve it, or...? Uh, you should. Okay, good. Yeah, so I caught everything I need in Rock Tunnel pretty quickly, but I'm going to keep my lure up because um, just the off chance I do see a Kangaskhan... One percent encounter, but if I don't have the lure up, it's going to be even less. Right, I found my male Nidoran. nice thing about not trading Diglett early on is that now Kerbis gets the chance to get some levels on Diglett. In general, because Pikachu is going to finish first, it's better for Pikachu to be leveling things up more than Eevee does. So if Kerbis can grab six levels on Diglett, it can help out. So Etiquette only has to grab one level later on. This fight here is kind of dumb. It's probably like the worst fight in the first two and a half hours of the game. Um, this Vulpix here get, has a chance to burn you with Flamethrower, which obviously you're using your attack stat, so getting burned is bad. And then the Kadabra comes out, and the Kadabra's faster than you, so you have to make sure you're not at like low health um, because it hits you pretty hard. And Psybeam also has a chance to confuse you, so if you get confused, you can hit yourself. So a lot of things can go wrong on that fight, but 
Typically doesn't. It's just the first fight you really have to worry about in the run. Since you're already unlucky on Route 10 spawns. Since you're at plus two attack for that cadaver side or hitting yourself in confusion, oftentimes just means your EV faints. Oh yeah. <laughs> Stupid spinner wasn't spinning in time and I ran into an encounter. Alright, I'm on the last fight of Rock Tunnel. I did not see a Kangaskhan, so... That's not good. So, I've been using repels here to do the same thing that like entering a, a ladder would do. When you use a repel, all the Pokemon that are currently on a route despawn completely. And then you can immediately use a lore to get more stuff to spawn. So if you have a bunch of stuff that you don't want, don't need, you can just do the quick repel lore to reset things. Even though it's not a significant speed increase, uh, being on Persian, going through things that you normally are on Rhyhorn for is just very weird. <laughs> yeah. Like, navigating Rock the, Tunnel fast is just strange. The, the last room of Rock Tunnel is scary because you're fast enough to actually hit that spinner that always like turns before you can get to it. Yeah. All right, so starting to head up the tower here. We don't have the Sylph Scope yet, but this game actually requires you to fight your rival here before you can go into the game corner in Celadon. So we have to do like a little bit of this backward uh, backtracking that you normally don't have to. Spec coming in clutch. First turn, sand attack. Easy rival fight. So even though Pikachu Pikachu is like quite a bit over leveled uh, for a lot of this, Eevee doesn't gain as many levels like that. So I'm actually maybe like a level, maybe a, a level and a half higher than I would normally want to be on an any percent run right now. Um, so so this section is almost identical to any percent except for just what you're catching makes it pretty easy to transition back and forth at least on the ev side the the pikachu side's a lot more like the the sort of solo version of this category all obtainable pokemon
Yeah, one thing to note here is that Etiquette still doesn't have an Abra. I don't. Abra is one of the really nice Pokemon or hard Pokemon to find. And there is still a couple of opportunities left to get it. But if he doesn't find one, that's most likely another thing that Curvis will have to pick up later on. Yeah, I'm because I'm doing fairly decent time-wise, I think I'll probably sit and wait um, in on Route 7 to try and get it. Uh, Route 7, Route 7 might be, it's probably the best area to respawn encounters that we don't normally respawn encounters on. Like, it's, the grass is right next to the guardhouse there, so it's very quick to do. I'm going to cut through this grass real quick, just because there's a chance that Abra spawns there and despawns because I ran into it. Cool. Um, That's annoying. <laughs> Yeah, that's the other big problem with Abra. The ED side does need to pick up one of the two Fire Stones on, or along the route, so it's okay to go through there if you need encounters still. Ah, uh, there is a money item in here. I forget. I think it's up here. There are two money items in there, actually. There's two? I didn't know. There are. They're both right above the red path and one of them is very early okay so i got I a big pearl it all. got a big pearl from the second one so it's like i got two <laughs> so i'm gonna catch this keybone and machop that are on my screen and after that it's time to grind for kangaskhan our first one percent grind uh all right don't see abra so i'm gonna So we're going to see a lot of Curvis walking up and down out of that ladder at the top of this room. This room that Curvis is in is the biggest room that you have kind of access to for spawns. And because it has a ladder right in it, this is by far the easiest place to try to spawn a Kangaskhan. Yeah, there are certain routes or certain rooms that Pokemon are just way more likely to spawn as soon as you enter them. So Route 7, where Etiquette is trying to get the Abra is a good example of that. You almost always get three or four immediate spawns there. And this room is similar. You usually get four or five things right away, or pretty quickly anyways. You can get the spawns pretty quick. It's just a matter of uh, getting the right ones. <laughs> right. Yeah. Abra is, I believe, a 5% encounter yeah, in it's, this grass. It's usually not too bad. Or it might be four, actually. But something yeah, like it... that, yeah. I also might run out of lures here, but it doesn't really matter because even without lures, things spawn pretty quickly in this room. That's Yeah, I don't even have a lure active right now, but I'm still getting three or four spawns every time I walk out. And then you'll see later, we have other areas like the water where you catch a Dratini that oh, are yeah. quite frustrating. <laughs> Oh, You're lucky Some... to get one spawn. Yeah, sometimes you'll sit there for 15, 20 seconds and still not have a single spawn. Oh, there's a Kangaskhan. That was pretty fast. How'd you get a Kangaskhan before I got an Abra? That's not fair. <laughs> yeah, and that's some of the beauty of this category. There are giant swings in time, especially on the Pikachu side. All right, there's an Abra, and it's facing directly away from me. I almost went past it and ran in front of it. That was kind of scary. We can't celebrate yet because it can run away, like we said earlier. I got my Abra. Come on, Kanga.
Kangaskhan's at least a really big Pokemon, so the circle's really large, which makes excellent throws pretty easy. Okay, I caught it. All right. Took four balls. Uh, all things considered, that's not too bad. <laughs> yeah, that, I'll take that any day. All right, so now that I have my Abra, I'm going to dip into the Pokemon Center here to do two different things. The first thing is I'm going to teach um, one of Eevee's broken moves. Now we have access to the Psychic and Dark type moves. Um, we're going to teach Glitzy Glow, which is the Psychic move over Sizzly Slide. Uh, this is a move that... Uh, very high power special move and sets up a light screen at the same time. It's going to be really useful. I'm also going to talk to this lady here. Um, she is going to set the nature of every Pokemon that I see in the wild from now until the end of the day. So if you remember, we set our clock so the clock rolled past midnight earlier. Um, so now we never have to worry about the clock like accidentally rolling to midnight before we catch our Starmie later on. So you can ride Kangaskhan, but it's... <laughs> I'm honestly convinced that it's slower than walking. It really is. <laughs> Yeah, I did an entire alt main run with Kangaskhan riding it, and I think at best it's walking speed. It's like, I think it's meant to be walking speed, but you're so big that every time you like come anywhere near a corner, you wind up dismounting it, and it's just like crazy slow. It's funny though. Very good. Maybe I can ride Kangaskhan for a little bit for this run later. <laughs> all right, um, I'm just trying to mark off all the Pokemon that you're going to be sending me. Uh, I guess I'll teach Double Edge, that's fine. You can decide to skip Double Edge if you want. Double Edge is only like necessary for one fight. But there's a different way you can do that fight if you don't want to teach it. Um, but it can save time on some other fights too, so... Yeah, Double Edge can be annoying because it does a lot of recoil damage and it makes you have to heal a lot. Which I'm actually healing before going to the next fight because I know I'm going to have to heal during the fight instead. So this is Krabby's one time to shine in the run, bubble beaming this Rhyhorn is a lot better than anything Pikachu can throw at it. Yeah, the best Pikachu can do that Rhyhorn is a plus two helping hand double kick does get it. But Also, nobody be alarmed. An a second Kangaskhan just showed up, but again, that is solely because of the catch chain. So I did not get insanely lucky there seeing a second one. That usually happens if Kangaskhan is the last thing you catch. You're honestly kind of likely to see another one but by the time you get to the exit. Yeah, and even though there's totally an explanation for it, it always hurts as a runner to see a second one. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what my stats are. Okay. I'm 70 attack, 69 special attack at level 29. Oh my god. You're a higher level than I am. And <laughs> I'm not even plus attack or special attack either. All right, I think I've marked everything in blue that is from you. Uh, actually, yeah. Sure. Very important news, Rhyhorn is sniffing at the ground. I accidentally talked to it. Uh, so I just took like a very unnecessary risk there by double edging with too low health. Um, but because the, the Voltorb is faster than you are and has Sonic Boom, so he would have done 20 damage and I would have taken 21, I think it is, in recoil. Um, and I would have died, but... The game gives you free revives, so I would have just used one of those. Um, Eevee's experience basically doesn't matter anymore. So losing a little bit of extra experience 
isn't too bad. And like you saw there, I had to heal anyways, so dying to the recoil wouldn't have been too bad. Yes, like Fervus is evolving Nido Arena right now. Nido King is a very nice partner for Pikachu. It just happens to deal with a lot of the things Pikachu is not very good at fighting later on. Yeah, like Nido King on its own isn't anything spectacular, but it just complements Pikachu really well for this next section. The only two moves that Nido King actually has are Poison Jab and Fury Attack for attacking. But it also has Helping Hand, which Helping Hand gives you, I believe it's a 50% boost? Yeah. Or to your partner's next attack. And that's extremely helpful for a yes. few fights. So Poison Jab and Helping Hand are the only things that Nido King winds up using. Yeah, you can learn Thrash when you level when you evolve, but Thrash effectively has the same power as Poison Jab. Um, and Poison Jab is just better. <laughs> uh, you don't have to worry about being locked into the move or getting confused, anything like that. So generally, like, Rocket Hideout, which is coming up, that's where Rocket gets at, super dangerous for Pikachu if you're trying to do it alone. I'm going to grab this. But with Nido King, it's actually pretty free for the most part. Like, taking a death from the hideout is generally not going to happen. Is someone um, building good. something in one of your streams? Yeah, that's me. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, no worries, man. Just was wondering what was going on. Background noise. <laughs> no worries, Harris. All right. I'm like slightly damaged, and you normally want to go into this fight at full health, but I'll be fine. Uh, Mr. Mime is going to get his time to shine. Mr. Mime plays a very important role in this next fight. Uh, Etik is about to fight Jesse and James, and they both have Poison-type Pokémon. So Mr. Mime is a Psychic-type psychic Pokémon. So it's going to be very effective at dealing with Jesse and James. Run wouldn't be possible without him. Whoops. Just grabbing another extra money item. I like Eevee doesn't matter too much about money just because we actually beat the game, so we you know get the normal amount of money. Um, and if you like look at the end of an any percent run, like you buy 10 more X specials than you actually need, you buy way more hyper potions than you actually need. So there's a ton of extra money already, but especially for marathon safety, just getting a few extra ultra balls can't hurt. Yeah, there are a few things that you have to catch that can go wrong. Usually you have enough money for Ultra Balls, but there are things like Mole Trace that could be a problem. I'm excited to see how Mr. Mime does here. Alright, so Mr. Mime is going to help us by using an X item. Uh, wait, no, I don't want a Glitzy Glow. What am I doing? Uh, so we're going to Buzzy Buzz the Arbok. Arbok's pretty fast, so by paralyzing it, the Mr. Mime will outspeed it. Um, and that, Oh, I used the next special on the Eevee, and oh no, Mr. Mime is dead. Oh no. Uh... That, that was intentional. <laughs> Mr. Mime yes. is part fairy. So fairy is weak to poison. Um, so what we do is we basically bait Jesse and James to hit the second slot rather than double teaming into Eevee. If you get double hit by Eevee or on Eevee, uh, this fight can actually be really bad. 
Yeah, generally in any percent, we either use Clefairy or Paris or Jigglypuff. But we have the extra option of Mr. Mime for catch em all runs, so. It's usually pretty fun to use Mime instead. I've never even considered it. That's so funny. Alright, so this fight here is historically one of the worst fights in the entire run. Um, back before two controllers were allowed, uh, you'd have to do this fight as one controller, and no matter what your Pokemon was that you're trying to do this fight with, it just sucks. Um, there were times when like, we were doing Eevee mains and this fight was bad. If you're trying to use Pikachu through this fight, it can be pretty bad. Um, Nido King had a hard time through here. There was a time when using a Lolan Doug Trio was a thing. Um, and that's pretty bad because the Weezing has Flamethrower, so this is just a horrible fight. But with two controllers, uh, it's really not that bad. Still can troll you a bit, but uh, for the most part, it's a pretty straightforward fight now. Uh, super. Oh yeah, Kadabra was a thing too. Kadabra was fine as long as you had plus speed. Because <laughs> this Golbat's pretty fast and will demolish you with Crunch. Yeah, so one thing you'll notice is that Kerbis, unlike Etiquette, did not go into the Pokemon Center in Celadon. That's because Pikachu, because it's not actually beating the game, doesn't really mean to synchronize in nature. It doesn't really matter for any of the catches going forward. Yeah, so that missed Rock Slide there wasted a little bit of time, but it gave me a chance to heal my Eevee, so not too bad. Um, there's a different way you can do this fight, where you can actually uh, go to plus four special and plus two speed and just one-shot the Golbat, but I only like doing that if I'm going into the fight at full health. Um, if I'm going in damaged already then may as well just do it that way. And then here's Giovanni. Giovanni is basically the only fight that we actually want Double Edge for. Um, it's just Double Edge is so powerful that we can use two controllers to set up to plus two speed and plus four attack before we attack uh, and take out the Persian. The alternate strat for this is actually a really cool one where you do it as a one controller fight instead and lead the Graveler. Um, Graveler pretty much walls the Persian, and you set up a couple X attacks, and then you will um, self-destruct, and it takes it out. It's a really cool strat, but I was at full health anyways, so it makes sense for me to do this one. So this fight I'm doing is kind of interesting. Usually... Like in an any percent run, you're. Oh man, I did actually didn't get the one hit KO there. I thought for sure I would at level 30. But. Usually it takes two turns. Um, with a really high attack, Nido King or Pikachu, you can squeak out a one hit KO on the Hypno. And both of them are capable of it, but it's kind of hard to get the stats for it. So you gotta kind of pay attention to the stats of both of them to see which one has a higher chance. So now that I'm done with Hideout, um, still have a little bit more plot to do before I go back to, like, really focusing on catching and stuff. Um, we have the Sylph Scope. We're going to go do Pokemon Tower. Um, I'm going to be catching a Ghastly, but not evolving it. Um, there are four Pokemon that evolve via trade. Uh, Alakazam, Gengar, um, Machamp, and Golem. And so what we've done is we've actually split it. So I'll be getting Graveler and Machoke and trading those for Kerbis who gets um, Haunter and Kadabra. 
The reason we split it like that is two of the Pokemon learn a move via evol like evolution. So uh, if we trade our Kadabra for Machoke, then we're both going to be um, learning a move at the same time. So we can basically minimize the amount of time that one side is waiting. If we were to do a trade evolution, one side is evolving and the other side isn't. Um, the other side just has to sit there and wait for the evolution to finish anyways. So we try to trade for the evolutions when the time comes to make sure that neither of us are waiting unnecessarily. Um, and I don't know if there's an actual reason, because I know I know Kerbis and some other people have looked at this route a bit more, but the main reason I split it up by Kadabra and Ghastly is just... Uh, two special attackers versus two physical attackers just to make it easier to remember. <laughs> I never even thought about that. Yeah, that's literally the only reason I did those two specifically. Like, you could do um, Ghastly and um, Machoke if you wanted to, but just made it easier for me. This guy gives you 20 Great Balls after you finish off Sylphco. Um, I'll be switching to Ultra Balls right now, but having like extra Great Balls is always good, just in case I either run out of Pokeballs for the second slot, or on the very rare chance that I run out of Ultra Balls. So I'm kind of getting close to the point where I'm going to just stop progressing the story completely. And for me, at least, that's where the run gets really fun. Because <laughs> you're just going all over the place, catching Pokemon. That is like my only task. But I still have a couple gyms to fight, and I have to finish off this Team Rocket section. Yeah. So... Realistically, Kerbis wouldn't or doesn't necessarily have to fight the next two gyms either. It's just that you can't buy Ultra Balls until you have four gym badges. Yeah, so. I've tried doing this with only... I think the first time I tried this run with Etiquette, I yeah. tried fighting only two gyms, but the Ultra Balls were super tight. Yeah. Not and super feasible. Only fighting or fighting two extra gems only takes about five or six minutes, so it's not yeah. a huge detour. And it's again like I'm usually winding up waiting at the end, anyways, or whoever's running the peak aside. So those extra few minutes to have easy access to ultra balls is definitely worth it. Like it costs me time, but it doesn't generally cost the run overall time. didn't feel I should do that. You do make some of that time back just because Great Balls get a lot more breakouts. You are catching some harder things later on. Alright, so I did see a Ghastly earlier, but it was I had to backtrack across the entire floor so I didn't go for it. Now I'm on the final floor and kind of wish I grabbed it. Yeah, uh, actually, okay. <laughs> Lavender Tower is one of those areas, like the water where you get your teeny, where stuff just doesn't like to spawn very often. I don't know how the game didn't register that the Haunter spawned on top of me, and I was able to sneak past it into the cutscene trigger. <laughs> oh, wow. Haunter has a very weird hitbox, I think. Yeah. They, um, in my opinion, like, Overall, they did hitboxes really well in this game, and when, especially if you compare it to like Sword and Shield with some of the overworld encounter hitboxes there. Like this game the did it really and, well. The Sword and Shield Onyx that you can hit from a giant circle around it. 
or girder that or girder, yeah. just <laughs> it's like you see it on your screen and that means you're in the encounter oh there's another ga a haunter um i'm actually like i said i'm not catching this um not only is it tough to catch because it's a haunter um but it would kind of mess up our trade evolution stuff so because when you when you trade for a trade evolution, you not only gain the dex entry for the evolution, but you get it for the the smaller one too. So by receiving Haunter, I will get both Haunter and Gengar via trade. Um, literally, just nothing is spawning. Yeah, in my last run of this on the EV side, I went through Pokemon Tower and found a Chansey, two Golbats, a Cubone. And a Haunter before I got Ghastly. <laughs> I have two Haunters and a Cubone so far. You're getting up there now. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a Chansey in Tower. This is ridiculous. There it is. Oh my god. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> yeah, every like... time you... Go ahead. Go. Every time you run any catch em all category in this game, there'll be one or two Pokemon that just baffle you when they don't spawn yeah there's there's not that many like super rare things you have to get but just the sheer number of things you have to catch makes it so that at least a couple of them are almost always gonna troll you there's kingler i'm not gonna bother um are you gonna evolve your crabby into kingler or do you just want mine yeah, we should both evolve it. Okay. I want to make sure I have it marked right. Um, so even though this is evolving, I'm not going to go into my menu to, de to deposit it yet because I'm going to do, after this next fight, I'm going to be doing a lot of menuing, so it doesn't make sense to just do it now. All right, Mr. Mime is going to get his time to shine again. Oh, there's another Maybe Ghastly, this. of course. <laughs> Maybe this time I get slightly higher level Pokemon, Mr. Mime will do a little better. Because <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, it's the whole Jesse and James thing. Like, I realize they're going after, like, the main games and, like, how the story worked there. But, like, you see Jesse and James once in Mount Moon. You don't see them again for almost an hour. And then you see them twice in 10 minutes. <laughs> that's kind of like how in Silpco you fight Archer and then you take the teleport pad and then Archer's there ready yeah. to tussle again <laughs> oh no Mr. Mime died again I don't feel too bad. Technically, the Mr. Mime isn't mine. Doesn't have my trainer ID, so I don't feel obligated to keep it safe. And I just don't care about the Mr. Mime. <laughs> exactly. Poor Mr. Mime now. Now I feel bad. All right, cool. Uh, we're not going to bother healing. Like, we have nothing to do on this turn with the Graveler, but we're not going to bother healing here because Eevee's job is actually done. Uh, it will be going into the box forever now. Is our next trade the Victory Road one? Or is there one before that? I'm trying to remember. Nope, that's the next one. Wow, okay, cool. Yeah, we go quite a while without trading. So the next trade we do will be the... Well, actually, we'll probably do a small one and then a 
a short time later we'll do the beefy one where we'll trade like 20 or 30 different things at once oh right yeah and then after that uh, the last trade is at the very end All right, so I'm going to duck in here to the Sodon department store. Um, because I haven't gotten four badges yet, I still only have two. Uh, because the game sort of, like, opens up kind of ridiculously once you have two badges. Um, I can't buy any Ultra Balls, so all I'm going to be buying are Evolutionary Stones. Um, there are roughly ten Pokemon that can evolve via Evolution Stone. I only need to get three stones here. I think I'm evolving four total things. Uh, Kerbis has most of the evolution stones that we need to do. Yeah, I picked up a fire stone. I have to get a thunder stone, water stone, and a leaf stone. So one of each. For getting ice stones. Hmm. I forgot to grab the nugget and rare candy before I flew away from Celadon. I'll have to grab those after tower. So I don't know how many things you picked up, but Lavender Tower or Pokemon Tower is loaded with money items. I picked up the PP up on the top floor and the nugget behind the mandatory trainer on that floor. That was it. But yeah, there's there's a ton of them. <laughs> yeah, the biggest problem with a lot of the items or money items in Pokemon Tower is that a lot of them are stuck behind spinners, so you lose a little bit of extra time getting them but it's absolutely worth it for pikachu yeah all right so i'm actually going to be running away from the snorlax um obviously only one of us have to get snorlax and that snorlax there is actually harder to get than the other one um all of those sort of stationary encounters are going to boost either one or more of their stats and the snorlax here boosts its defense which makes it a bit harder to catch or to defeat, and the other Snorlax boosts its attack, which makes it not harder to get. So uh, later on, Kerbis will be getting the other Snorlax. Um, I didn't lure, but this Doduo should be, I mean, it's high enough level to evolve in one level, um, but I actually use the Doduo in battle, so it should be good enough. Castle's trolling me. Uh, that's Hypno. Okay. Yeah, Snorlax has the weird distinction of being the only non-legendary Pokemon that you actually have to fight before you can catch it. So I'm a bit low on Ultra Balls. Um, however, this here is the guardhouse we mentioned earlier, where Professor Oak's aid is up on the second floor. And if you've caught 40 Pokemon, then he'll give you 30 Ultra Balls. And I have 44. So just barely enough. Also, shoutouts to this trainer skip here. Uh, this is actually, I think, the last of the four trainer skips that were found. 
Uh, but it's a really nice one. Yeah, that trader has a very long vision, but you can sneak under. As long as you're not on a ride boat one. Every trainer's vision cone in this game is extremely thin, so... Yeah, it's basically like a laser. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so here's Ponyta. Ponyta, or Rapidash, is going to be my new ride Pokemon. Um... So finding that here is really nice. The other thing I would like to get here, um, but I technically don't have to stick around for it, is Psyduck. Um, I probably will stick around for it, just because it's a little bit more common here than it is later on, um, where I could get it later. But Yeah, I would just stick around for it. Uh, actually, and I also want Pidgey, though Pidgey I can definitely get elsewhere because... I'll probably find, like, 17 Pidgeys when I'm looking for Pinsir. Oh. There's a Pidgey, so I guess I'll catch that. Uh, just making sure you evolve from Pidgey to Pidgeotto, and then you take my Pidgey out, right? Yep. Perfect. All right. That's what I thought. There's Golbat evolved. Uh, let's not do that. I don't think what needs to go in my party after this. I think just ghastly. Let's do a party, bit of party management myself here. seven rare candies at this point. Normally in any percent at this point, you have like three. Yeah, one of the big questions on this run when you're running it is how many rare candies do you actually want to pick up? For Pikachu, you want to get as many as possible because you're trying to evolve Dratini or get, get Dratini from level 24 to 55. But for Eevee, one of the big time save questions is how many rare candies can you skip and still get away with it? It's oh, kind of hard to juggle because you don't really know until you're close to the end of the run how yeah. many you need. Oh. As soon as I put away my second controller to go respawn pokes, Psyduck spawns, so... <laughs> That's good. That will go right to my party, so I don't have to worry about that. I 
I didn't realize I never evolved female Nidoran. I don't need lore, okay. So I meant to grab these items before I flew away to Lavender. Because it takes a while to run back from picking them up. But we're just going to have to do that now anyways. The items are too important to skip. Actually, is it faster, for, I wonder, for me to fly to sell it on? Probably. <laughs> uh, especially on Rhyhorn, I think it is. I don't know, it's probably close. It might be, though. I don't catch anything for a while. Okay, cool. I mean, other than the Route 21 stuff. Alright, so I'm gonna do the same as Etiquette and go get Evolution Stones from the Celadon department store. And I'm also gonna buy a ton of Repels and Lures. Etiquette has hit the point of the game where the route will very closely resemble any percent for a little while. There are a couple extra catches to get, and then there's some things with fossils, but other than that... We're and I'm now at the point where nothing is going to look even remotely close to any percent. Yeah, <laughs> so this is, this is really where the two games split off. I'm actually going to slightly detour here. I'm going to grab the gold teeth and strong push just so I can get the extra nugget. Um, the the nugget, again, like money's not too tight in Eevee. I just want a little bit of a safety net. But um, if I waited until later to get the nugget, it wouldn't be useful because I wouldn't do any more shopping. So um, at the point when I normally would get this secret technique. So I'm just going to quickly... If I had thought about it, I would have grabbed this before Sea Skim, but I didn't decide I wanted to do this until I was watching the cutscene. I guarantee in like 45 minutes I'm going to be here normally, and I'm going to go to do that cutscene, and it's not going to be there. I'm going to be really confused. So since I'm going to be using repels and lures pretty often for the next little section of the run, I switch them to the end of my bag just so that they're easier to, to menu to. So yeah, small little detour here. One of us needs to get the old amber. Um, and just because Pikachu is going to be catching a lot more Pokemon, uh, this like small 45 second detour just makes more sense for Eevee to do. Aerodactyl is also kind of useful for for the yes. fact that once you beat the game, you can fly high up in the air and just fly over stuff with certain Pokemon, and Aerodactyl is one of them, the easiest one to get. So since Eevee is the only one that's going to post game, it's kind of better for Eevee to grab that. Oh wait, I need to lure. So I need to get Staryu and Tentacool here. Uh, Magikarp also is nice to get. Um, Tangela has a chance to spawn in the grass, but didn't, so I'm not going to sit around for it. Grab the Staryu first. Uh, water is one of the two places that you cannot use two controller, f uh, two controller catches for. Uh, the other being up in the sky 
uh, in the post game. So. Uh, this star you hear is decent. Uh, the CP value is 1068. I think Staryu has a chance of having a CP value of like 950 to 1150, roughly. So anything over 1050 means it's above average. Um, it's not worth like running away from a bad one. It just sort of gives you an idea of how good it is. I don't know what the exact formula is, but yeah. I found an Eevee immediately. Um, it's jumping around a lot. Can you stop that, please? <laughs> I don't know how I got that excellent throw, but since I saw an Eevee immediately, I'm going to try to take advantage of the catch chain, and I'm not going to catch any of the other stuff that I want on this route until I have all three Eevees that I need. And again, this is just because you can't evolve the starter Eevee, and you also just need to get three Eeveelutions, so you're going to have to catch multiples of them no matter what you do. Yeah, breeding is not a thing in this. Yeah. I was kind of surprised they didn't put breeding into this game. Because, like, there was a daycare in Gen 1, and there is a daycare in this game. It's just, it only allows you to put one Pokemon there at a time. Alright, this tentacle is kind of trolling a little bit. Come on. So I'm going to ignore this Ponyta, for example, even though I need one. Alright, and there's Magikarp, so I'll grab that too. Uh, Magikarp's actually going to be useful for us later on, um, but... Yeah, there, there's a chance we would have had to get it later. Um, other people don't seem to have the same feeling I do. I hate catching Magikarp. Like, it just, for some reason, it doesn't seem as easy to catch as it really should be. So that's why I used no. the Raspberry there. <laughs> I agree with you completely on Magikarp. Magikarp's a pain. Yeah. Magikarp's free. Ah. <laughs> it just jumps around a lot, and you're catching it one controller, so... Yeah. Yeah. All right, EV number two. No, why'd you get up on A little that? longer than I would have liked, but. I got him. Wow. This is a great part of the game because you now have access to silver raspberries. And normal raspberries kind of suck. I don't feel like they do very much for you, but silver raspberries are super helpful. Yeah, and I'm actually going to have access to golden ones later on. Yeah. Not for a whole lot of the actual, like, catching section. I'm really going to have access to them for, like, Victory Road and Cerulean Cave, but uh, those are the places where they're probably needed the most. All right, so take a quick detour, grab my fossils. Fossils are really nice in this game because they give you, they just like give it back to you immediately. It's not like Gen 1 where you had to like leave the building and come back. All right. All right, I have all three Eevees. That, that was very quick. I still have to catch the other stuff on this route, though. Yeah, but even still? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, Eevee is a 5% encounter once again, so it's not that bad, but since you have to catch three of them, it can be a little bit annoying. Which is why we stick with the catch chain. Um... I already have a Psyduck, so really I just need the Ponytondo duo. I think there was a Dodo on my screen already. Alright, this Staryu is actually very good. Um, 
At level 45, I have like 93 special attack. Uh, bad speed, but for some reason I have seven quick candies, so I'm just gonna pump those into the star you and everything will be fine. There you go. Since these EVs got put into my party, I'm just gonna evolve them now. Or at least the two that got put into my party. The third one I'll just do later. Actually, don't have a thunderstone yet, anyways. All right, then we teach Scald to Starmie. Uh, so Starmie is going to be my new main for the rest of the run, basically. Um, and the the particular one I got is actually very good. Um, One twenty three special attack evolved at level 45 is probably mid 20s in terms of IV um, and then like I said my speed was lacking but I was able to pump those quick candies in to give myself like a, a free seven stat points um, which now makes this as if it's a mid to decent tier in terms of special or uh, in terms of speed um, I have a magmar on my screen so I figure I'll just catch it yeah, I think you need to catch some things to rebalance right now anyways. Alright. So there's coughing, that was a pretty quick catch. Yeah, see, even just using a normal raspberry there, it didn't even change the color of the circle from orange to yellow. Like, it just doesn't do a ton. It does a little bit, and I still got it first ball. That's really nice. All right, yeah, so there's the magmar done. So now I get to main switch from Pikachu to Doduo for these two gems I'm going to do. It's one of the coolest strats. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I just like that so many different Pokemon get their little chances to take part in a few fights. Yeah, the, the game in general is kind of weirdly balanced. So as you're going through the game, you're like mostly either over leveled or like just about the same level as your opponents um until you get to like route nine rock tunnel then you start to like fall behind a little bit in experience and then by the time you're facing like giovanni in the hideout like he's level 35 and you're usually like 28 or so so it's a pretty big uh level difference and then once you gain the the poke flute you have access to Pokemon that are level 39, almost 40. Um, so you jump basically 10 levels all at once. Uh, and it makes all of those Pokemon that are available on those routes at level 39 really viable to use. Dodrio, um, if Ponyta, Rapidash weren't like bad Pokemon, you could use them. I just wasted a candy. Oh, uh, whoops. That's fine. So, Kirkus, out of curiosity, how, how are you planning on fighting Lieutenant Surge? You know, just for you, I'll do the triple jump kick. It's the way to do it. Uh, 
Uh, so this is scientist Ted. Like Archer back in the hideout, this was historically, this actually probably was the worst fight where oh, yeah. Archer Archer was like a really bad one. This was the worst one. Uh, with two control, it's really not too bad. We actually kind of do the same thing that we do on the Jesse and James fights and bring out a Pokemon that um, he's just going to obliterate. So Dodrio gets to go bye-bye here. Sometimes he can target the Staryu, or the Starmie, but usually he doesn't. And even if it does target the Starmie, it won't kill Starmie unless it crits. Yeah, generally the worst thing that can happen is getting paralyzed, and even that's not bad unless you get fully paralyzed. Yeah. And just like every other Let's Go runner, I made sure to check my Starmie's stats right after, uh, like, try to switch Pokemon. <laughs> So I'm doing something that Etiquette skipped and saved for later, getting Strong Push, which I need to use in Seafoam Islands. And the reason I'm doing it now is because there's not really another good chance for me to do it. And also, I want to get this nugget right now that is behind this block. Okay. Etiquette did actually get Strong Push. Just oh, did he? Yeah. Did, yeah. Yeah, the Eevee side, like, you can do it now, but just because Eevee isn't really as tight on money, you don't really need the Nugget, so you can just do it when you come back to Fuchsia later. Yeah, it doesn't matter too much when you do it for the Eevee side. Yeah, if I if we were doing, like, a, a true PB attempt or whatever, I probably would right. have waited, but um, for this, just making sure I have a little bit of extra money. Um, so Dodrio is fainted on my side, um, but I do want him back. So I'm actually going to take the, the free heal here. Um, Dodrio is very necessary for a fight later on. So it needs to be alive again. Um, and it, the bed's right next to the, um, the switch we have to go to anyway. So it's really not too bad to grab. It's faster than opening the menu and healing. <laughs> Rare candy. Uh, I'm going to grab this ditto because it's right here. Ditto can be a very hard Pokemon to catch um, if you wait until Cerulean Cave. So seeing one here, it's a no-brainer to go for. All right, so now I'm going to head off and... I'm going to pull ahead of etiquette in badge count temporarily. <laughs> That's ridiculous to think. <laughs> kind of funny. It's true, but it's ridiculous. What's your uh, Pokemon count right now? 57. Ah, I'm ahead there, though. Oh, I'm not at for 60. long, though. Yeah, I'm at 60, and I'm going to be at 60 for a while. <laughs> Except for m one or two evolutions. Oh, I'm at 61. Haha, -ha. I have Star You. Or Star Me. I forgot to mark. I have to go back and get Sand True. Can't forget that. But yeah, the, the next thing that I will be catching, uh, unless I'm forgetting something, is going to be after I have seven badges. I currently still have two. So, you can see how long it's going to be before I'm catching more stuff. Yeah, you will get Lapras and Porygon yeah. along the way, but those are given to you since they're gift Pokemon instead. Do I have anything else to evolve uh, you? Okay. So it doesn't bother me at all, but it's funny that 
I can like very faintly hear Pikachu's I'm using a secret technique cry in your microphone. <laughs> I know exactly where you are because of it. Yeah, it's like some of those really high pitched sounds. Yeah. Like every five seconds, Pika! Oh, he's going through <laughs> Erica's gym. <laughs> Oh, the stream probably has my audio, so they can't even hear it. Alright, so we're going to fight Blaine. Blaine's a very easy fight. Um, only one thing that can go wrong, and even then it's not, like, wrong. It's more like the standard thing that happens, which is getting confused right on turn one. Yeah, I'd say you get a turn one confused right about 90% of the time. Oh, nice. I actually have enough X items for everything. It's really nice. Uh, okay. Alright, so I'm going to go for the cursed strat of triple jump kick on Surge. If I die, you can all blame Josh. <laughs> yeah, so the easiest way to get through Lieutenant Surge is have with Dodrio is to just use jump kick three times because all the Pokemon die to jump kick. Uh, Raichu is a range if you have very, very bad attack, but even then it's favorable. The one problem is that jump kick has 95% accuracy, so you can't, and when you miss a jump kick, you take 50% crash damage, and every one of Lieutenant Surge's Pokemon has Thunderbolt, which will kill your Dodrio after the crash damage, so... There's a 5% chance on each Pokemon that your Dodrio faints. It's basically nothing. Yeah, alternatively, you can set up with one Sword Stance, and then you can Jurl Peck two of the Pokemon, and you only have to Jump Kick the Magnemite. So it's one turn slower, but you get rid of that Crash Damage chance on two out of three Pokemon. So it's a... We fight about it a lot. Which strat is better? <laughs> and honestly, like the jump kick probably is the way to go, just because if Dodrio dies, I still have a Rapidash that can more or less handle Surge's Pokemon without much trouble. Because these Pokemon are level 40, and this is supposed to be the third gym you do, so they're only like 20 something. Yeah. So it's the not one problem. scary. The one problem you run into with Rapidash is that. Occasionally, Fire Blast isn't good enough to kill Raichu. I just used Drill Peck on accident. Whatever. I don't know why I did that. So we're going to get the double jump kick. The super rare double jump kick fight. I can accept that compromise. Yeah, the Magnemite's steel type, so it doesn't die to the drill pick no matter what. So you kind of have to use jump kick on that one. All right, I hit the double jump kick. We're good to go. Yeah, the Eevee side is boring now. We're doing normal Pokemon stuff where we're just going from gym to gym. Uh, we delayed all of this stuff until now. So now basically the last thing we have to do is just beat all the gyms. And then we have Silphco, uh as well that we have to do in order to progress through the story. Uh, I will take... Actually, I don't know. Do I do... Should I do Dojo early or late? I don't really... It doesn't really matter. Yeah, I don't think it makes too much of a difference. I can't believe it's faster to actually walk up to each one. <laughs> it's dojo. like a lot faster, too. I know. It shouldn't be. It 
it's funnier so, to just make them walk. <laughs> this little pond of water is the only place in the game where you can get a Goldeen. Swimming. Yeah, and it's it's worth pointing out, even though it's a, a surf encounter, um, encounters in this game, the levels are based on the route. So everything on a route, regardless of if it's in the um, the water or on land, is gonna be the same levels. So at maximum you're getting level 17 Goldeen, and Goldeen evolves at 33, so it's actually a pretty significant level up that's needed um luckily 33 isn't terrible to get just because like all the catches we're doing we're gaining a ton of experience um and things don't start getting hard to evolve until it gets above like 35 or so um stuff like dratini getting up to 55 is ridiculous so i'm just running up to saffron here so that i can unlock the city to be able to fly back to it later i don't actually want to do anything here yet gonna teach thunderbolt to my starmie that's gonna be the last move um round out my move set really nice and now we can get this free bulbasaur this you have to have caught 30 pokemon to get this bulbasaur not pokedex entries you have to have caught 30 and then charmander you can get a free one after you've caught 50 and squirtle you can get a free one after you've caught 60 and in this run since we're splitting up the catching it's actually hard to hit that 60 number, so we wind up getting a Squirtle elsewhere. Dang. Yeah, even without splitting up the catching, like doing uh, catch em all or all obtainables by yourself, um, getting the Squirtle in time is actually pretty tight. Yeah, like you you can't delay a ton of things like all those stuff on route 10 that you could get on 23 instead um you kind of don't want to do that because you won't have enough catches to get the, the squirtle in time all right i've got my sancher nice making my way through erica's gym now so we're coming up on my side on absolutely my least favorite part of the run <laughs> which is catching a Dratini. We mentioned it earlier, but this it's just this narrow path of water, and it's the only place in the game where you can get wild Dratinis, and stuff just refuses to spawn there. And Dratini, it's a 4% it's a spawn, but it feels worse than the 1% spawns even. There's also a 1% spawn in that water, which is a Dragonair. And whenever you see Dragonair, it always stings too, because it's like that could have been a Dratini instead. Whoops. So I'm just loading up on Ultra Balls, because that's pretty much one of the only items I'll need for the rest of the game. Yeah, as long as the legendary birds go okay, that should be enough Ultra Balls. Yeah. <laughs> Every once in a while, the birds do cause a little bit of a problem. So kind of silly, but I have to dodge these spinners for the second time. So, power plants down here. We're gonna get a Zapdos and a bunch of stuff in there. Is that a Dratini? Oh my. Oh, it's a tentacle. What? Okay. <laughs> you had me. <laughs> I think that's the same tentacle that I just swam past, too. So, tentacle and Dratini are like exactly the same color, so when you can only see part of them, it baits you pretty easily. 
One other thing that's very annoying about this route is it's sometimes very annoying to dodge Pokemon too because the path is so thin. So you find yourself accidentally going on land or running into extra encounters all the time. So this Magnemite's important too. It's actually good that I'm catching it first. I'm going to use this Magnemite to fight Zapdos. Because yeah. the legendary birds are at level 50. And my highest level Pokemon currently is a level 41 Dodrio, which will not do so well against an electric type legendary Pokemon. Yeah, Magneton is an electric steel type, which happens to be really nice for resistances against Zapdos. And if you want to, it also works very nicely against Articuno as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this fight here is kind of cool on the Eevee side. So um, this was probably my favorite fight that we figured out once we allowed two controllers. Um, and it really shows how broken two controller is. So uh, one of the only grass types that we face in the entire run, uh, at least as Starmie, is going to be this uh, Executor. And being grass psychic and us being water psychic, we really have no good moves against it. Um, so... In order to mitigate that, instead what we do is we bring this Dodrio in, and we use an X attack on the Dodrio from the Starmie slot. Usually the second controller is the one using, or the one using all the X items. But this time we sort of flip the script and use the X attack on the Dodrio. And then the second Pokemon that comes out is a Charizard, which obviously Starmie is now good against. So we turn it back around and use an X special attack on the Starmie. Um, just a really cool fight. Shows off the two controller brokenness really well. I actually had good enough special attack. I probably didn't need to X special at all, but habits. Um, and then now so, comes the hardest part in the, the entire run for me. Oh yeah. This fight sucks. Worst fight in the game. Not much to explain with it. It just sucks. <laughs> Not even two controller can save you there. I'm gonna keep dipping my head in and out of power plant, power plant, um, to despawn this area. But once I catch everything other than Zapdos that you can get in here, I'm just gonna start using repels to farm for Dratini. And also, I lied. I said that Magnemite is gonna be the thing to kill the Zapdos. Actually, it's gonna be this Magneton, because <laughs> since. Etiquette's not going to come to the power plant, and this is the only place you can get Magnemite and Magneton. I need to trade him both um, evolutions. Yeah, so the ideal way this fight goes is actually what just happened. Um, Electrode uses self-destruct turn one. Muck does not use protect, so I'm able to actually KO both of them turn one. Um, there's a decent-ish chance... Uh, that the Electrode decides to use Thunderbolt instead of Self-Destruct. And when that happens, it's very bad. Um, but I got really lucky there. Now the hard part about this fight is the Raticate here is going to be using Sucker Punch pretty much every turn. Um, and it's going to do a really decent chunk of damage. Although, he used Sucker Punch against Cubone, and it did nothing because Cubone decided to do nothing, which... Whatever, also... it works. <laughs> yeah, that works. We take those. Getting one Cubone. time doing nothing is useful. Yeah. Getting Cubone to cooperate on this fight can be pretty problematic sometimes. That's honestly like most of the reason it's terrible. Because Cubone is just a rebel. Just has yeah. one very specific move that's useful for the most part. Oh, he actually and crit the Raticate <laughs> both times. So 
basically what you're seeing now is why this water sucks. Nothing is spawning. All right, that was a very good archer fight. It can be it can be done one turn faster, but like that's super rare. So getting it done in four turns is really good. Yeah, four turns is about as good as you can reasonably ask for. Uh, just a small little optimization thing. So you'll notice whenever I try to go onto these teleporter pads, I'm going to try to do two different things. Uh, the first thing is I'm going to try to make sure I go onto them straight. If you go on at kind of like a weird angle, the game is going to like stop your character and then turn it in order to walk onto the teleporter correctly. Um, the second thing I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to go from the top every time as well. Um, and the reason for that is... Once you're on the teleporter pad, if you're not facing down, the character is going to turn to face down. So um, I'll actually do it wrong here on purpose. You'll notice that oh, I actually did the first part correctly by accident. Um, the character turns to walk onto the teleporter and then turns to face down in order to teleport away. Uh, the teleporters only exist here in Sylphco and then in Sabrina's gym, but it's just enough for it to be worth like understanding that mechanic and trying to maneuver your way around things in such a way that you're um, minimizing those extra turns. So all I need is an Electabuzz and the Dratini right here, which this could take me two minutes or it could take me 20. But now is the time since I just got an Electabuzz here. Now's the time for me to put all those repels I bought into use. Because this is one area where it takes kind of a long time to respawn the area using Power Plant. Because you have to get back on the, the surfboard every time. Yeah, I don't know who found it, but I know Wartab is the one who mainly popularized the idea of using repels to like respawn encounters. Such a like such a neat idea and it just is a little bit too slow to really be worth it in any percent. Like you can argue that it'd be useful in Pikachu on Route 10 to make sure you get like a Nidoran male, but aside yeah. from that, it's really just not quite use uh, not quite worth it. In Pikachu, especially since you have a partner Pokemon on Route 9 that you want to deposit at some point. Um, even if you have a male Nidoran and you're just looking for more encounters, it still can be good to, while you're menuing, to take that Pokemon out of your party. Right. Just pop a quick repel and lore. So, since this route is finicky, I'm only going to wait for two Pokemon to spawn before I use a Repel, generally. You can see this is much faster than me getting off the Surfboard and going into the Power Plant and leaving the Power Plant. My main Twitch channel just got a raid. Thank you for the raid, but you should actually type exclamation point PSR in the chat and go watch there instead. Um, there'll be a lot more people for you to talk to. We're doing a community marathon right now. Alright, so now that I'm done with Sylphco, all the trainers are gone. Uh, I'm going to be picking up a bunch of things. There's money items, there's rare candies, there's a couple of extra Pokemon I want to grab. So, um, And this is actually the last part where... 
picking up money items is really worth it because uh, I'm going to do my last shop of the run right before uh, moving on after Sylphco, so just try to get everything I can. There's nuggets, there's PP ups, there's a ton of them here, um, and there's quite a few that are like really readily available as well. Here's Lapras. Uh, believe it or not, Kerbis is actually not even going to be going through Sylphco, so he's not going to get the Master Ball, but that also means he doesn't get access to Lapras or Porygon, so those are both things I will be trading to him. I really hope I don't run out of lures. Have you bought your super lures yet? No. Okay. have 16 regular lures left. 15 now. Yeah, that's one of the things Tratini can do, is eat up lures very quickly if you're using repels for it. I don't know if there's a point I should stop using lures, or stop using repels and just respawn with the power plane again. Because it takes longer, but it doesn't use as many lures as quickly. Or if I should just go buy more. <laughs> I don't know. Um, all right, I'm going to forget, so I'm just going to mark Porygon now. I might stop at 10 and use power plants to respawn. Yeah, that is one thing that using repels and lures does, is it burns through your lures a lot more quickly. Alright, so... I do have one super lore as well right now. Oh man, Jotini. My best friend. Loves to do this to me. <laughs> I just had a mini heart attack because I didn't see the Helix Fossil in my inventory when I'm trying to sell stuff. I'm like, oh no, I sold it by accident. Like, no, I already have Almanite. <laughs> That's it. I'm gonna start using power plant after this one. All right, how am I doing? All right, I did a horrible job of trying to keep my Pokeballs and Ultra Balls count the same. I bought like 30-ish Pokeballs, and then I bought 121 Ultra Balls. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, the Ultra Balls are much more important in the end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can use Great Balls as your secondary anyway. Yeah, and I just also got a bunch of Premier Balls too, so those can be done. It's been a while since I've done a full run of Let's Go. Let's see if I remember the path through Sabrina's Gym. Believe it or not, I actually remember the path through Sabrina's Gym not because of, like, remembering top left, bottom right, stuff like that. I remember how the spinners are spinning when you get there and which way to go. Yeah, I kind of do that, too. Like, this spinner spins away as you're going, so you just go underneath her. Oh, I messed up that teleporter. I'm going to wait for her. I don't feel like hitting her today. There we go.
Yeah. The channeler that Etika just passed is one of the easier spinners to hit if you're trying to go fast and not paying attention. She has three haunters, so she's not hard to beat, but she's it's a time waster more than anything. Yeah. And like while PP is not super tight through this section, you do want to make sure you're not wasting it too much. Um, you're, you're gonna rope our elixir pretty soon, but um, yeah, you just don't wanna don't wanna waste too many moves if you can help it. Um, so here's Sabrina. Really, the only thing that can go horribly wrong is if she doesn't use light screen on turn one, um, and that's pretty rare. Yeah, there's light screen. The other thing that can go wrong is she's going to start using Psychic against me, which isn't very effective, but can drop your special defense. And if she does that too many times, it can get kind of dangerous. But yeah, once the setup is done, we take out the Mr. Mime, and now the light screen is going to wear off because she used it turn one and everything else will go down in one hit. I just had four spawns on that water route. I think that's a new record. <laughs> Still no Dratini, huh? All right, so both Tentacool and Gyarados are evolving. So the way this works, with all the rare spawns that I have to catch, Usually you can have one of them be pretty bad and it still doesn't really waste time. So Kangaskhan was fast. The Eevees were fast. The Stratini has not been fast. So pretty much as long as Scyther is good, then I still have a solid chance of finishing before Etiquette. It also kind of depends on the experience Routini gets after I catch it as well. Yeah, depending on what happens, sometimes Eevee has to finish off Routini's evolution with some extra rare candies. And that just entirely depends on how fast Pikachu can go and how much experience Pikachu is getting for catches in general. Pikachu sometimes gets time to grind. Uh, levels for Dratini later on. But it's not guaranteed at all. Alright, so I am going to do the dojo next. Um, fighting dojo is pretty funny in this game. Uh, everybody has like the longest vision in the history of the world. So you can't skip any of the, the five trainers. They all go down in one hit, especially like a water psychic Pokemon going up against all fighting and rock type Pokemon is pretty uh, broken, but yeah, it's it's just a bit of a time waster to have to do this, but um, we're both going to do the dojo and grab the opposite Pokemon. I think I'll be grabbing Hitmonchan, um, and he'll grab Hitmonlee. You can catch them in Victory Road, um, but... Again, there's no point to doing that if uh, if we can just both grab the different one. Oh, wow, that's significantly faster to just run up to him and talk to him. <laughs> yep. Yeah, these trainers, and just the trainers in this game in general, move at about the slowest possible walking speed you could imagine. Who's faster, NPC trainers or Kangaskhan? <laughs> Probably Kangaskhan. That's and saying that says something. That's a lot. Yeah. Something else. The thing about Starmie oh, is it's not even that good of a Pokemon. It's just good for this game. Yeah. Like that was one of the reasons why I I took so long to switch over when we were first doing routing. Like I was, 
I was stuck on Kabutops, which I mean, Kabutops isn't an amazing Pokemon by any means either, but um, it's just like Starmie wasn't amazing, so it was weird. But yeah, it ends up being the fastest Pokemon that we know it's of so like far. It's just like so many fighting and rock and poison type and stuff like that. Yeah. That you go against. It'd be so nice if randomly you could get a Staryu like before hideout. <laughs> oh man. With psychic That'd be crazy. for some reason. You just gotta find Snorlax skip. Then you don't even gotta do hideout. That would be so nice. Any skips in this game would be nice. Like, not like there's any parts of this run that are, like, bad and it would be nice to skip. It's just, you know, speeding things up by skipping stuff is always fun. So, I'm really not sure what the play is. Oh, okay. There's a Jatini. Okay. I was going to say, I don't know what the play is if I run out of lures. Alright, so I'm going to grab Hitmonchan. Make sure you grab Lee. That's what it says in the notes, but I wanted to make sure I said it out loud. Yeah, that's what that part. Good. You got it. Awesome. All right. So that was pretty slow, but not devastating, I would say. No, this is something that's very useful. Tons of time here. Yeah. Oh, I never evolved this thing. Oh, that's actually a mistake. And this. I can't believe I forgot those. Um, it's not the end of the world. It's just annoying that I forgot to do that. All right, so a little bit of menu management here. Um, moving items around to make them more accessible in battles. Um, and then I think that's it. Yeah, that should be it. Ah! Fly menu is hard. Yeah, it may not look like it, but this Saffron menu, or menu after Saffron City and Eevee is one of the hardest menus in the game. There's just a lot you have to do during it. Yeah, one of the things that, um, if you, like, look in the chats or if somebody's talking about, you might hear somebody say, like, God menu. So, Wartab put in a ton of effort um to in let's go pikachu make sure that your x items without having to swap them around at all are very easily accessible in battle like basically messing up with the buy order in the shop to make sure that your x specials are always in the last slot your x attacks are available if you just hit up in battle stuff like that um eevee hasn't had the same sort of attention to detail like that yet um, I started to do it, but I ran into an issue in the later game that I needed to address. Um, but yeah, in, in lieu of having God menu, we have to sort of swap items around. It doesn't take too long. Um, it just, if you're not entirely sure of what you're doing, it can, can be slow. Also, Jim Freak mentioning the the right answer in the chat. Uh, can we skip Naomi, please? That would be the skip we need. <laughs> yeah, Naomi is one of the worst fights in the game. I just hydro pumped the Beedrill. All right, we're fine. <laughs> All right, time to catch Zapdos. Get your guesses in on how many balls this will take. Well. That's my guess. I was going to say 13, so 12 is actually not a bad guess. Ooh, nice, excellent throw. Yeah, on average, I like 
the legendary birds to take around 10 throws each, but you're obviously hoping for better. I had, I think I've, I've since beaten the run, but one of my all obtainable PBs back before, like we really optimized the category was, I think I threw seven total balls at legendaries, including like the master ball on Mewtwo. <laughs> like, like you can get really lucky and then you can get really unlucky with them. That was a crazy excellent throw. I don't know how I got that. Oh, wow. That was actually really that good, was, yeah. That was very impressive, yeah. Yeah, you might think that... I think more lucky than impressive. <laughs> you might think that using berries on the legendaries would be worth it. Um, however, you'll notice that sometimes they do like this little animation and then they sort of have like this aura around them. So like Zapdos, for example, has this electricity swirling around it. When it does that, it just negates all berry effects. Got and it. it can do that at any point, so you don't want to, like, waste a... Especially, like, a really good berry on it. Alright, was oh, yeah. anyone actually counting? Because I wasn't. No, I wasn't. I wasn't either, but... Nice. It was very fast. Yeah, that was decent. That's the kind that you, like, can realistically hope for. Yeah. I think both mine and your AOP PBs took less than 15 balls for all three legendaries combined. That wouldn't surprise me, yeah. I know. I did all obtainables at PSR Marathon 2019 last year. And I actually... The pincer took forever to show up. And then when it did, it was going to run away from me. So I master balled it. And the first ball I threw at Mewtwo, I missed. The second ball it got in. Like I'd missed the Mewtwo altogether on the first throw. And the first one that actually hit it, it stayed into. See, now I have a chance. See, since I have Dratini in my party, I'm going to catch this one. Um, and speaking of Pinsir, now is my time to oh, baby. do All this. Right. It's one and only 1% grind that he has to endure. This is the gatekeeper. Pinsir is the big gatekeeper. Um, okay, I'm going to mess with my inventory real quick just to move like lures and stuff around. I do need some other things on this route. Um, normally, like when you're looking for something rare and you have to catch other stuff on the route, you would hold off on catching the rare thing or the the common things. However, um, because Pinsir is so rare, it's like almost worth just catching everything you need as you go. I might hold off on like Venonat. I still try to avoid it. Honestly. Yeah, I'm gonna not get Venonat or Weeping Bell as both of them just spawn. Um, what level does Sandshrew evolve? 22. Oh, okay. That's perfect, actually. It fainted to the Zapdos at level 21. Oh! <laughs> I was contemplating whether I should try to revive oh, it. Oh, whoops. Try, I used my last normal lure, so it wore off. So, I'm fighting this trainer here. Uh, it, when you beat her, she gives you five rare candies. So it's pretty useful. Yeah, there are a couple of these coach trainers throughout the game that will give you rare candies as rewards, and ah. they're not necessarily good in all obtainable, but in Diploma, where Pikachu has some extra time, it's nice to fight a few of them. And this one is good in all obtainable anyway. Yeah, the other one has, I think it's the three evolutions. Um... And, like, there's no one Pokemon that really deals with all three of those types well. Uh, you sort of have to gimmick your way through it. Like, it just takes a little bit more setup than normal. Um, oh, my God. Are okay. you, Aqua, you are in Aqua Jet range, aren't you? Apparently. I have revives, so it's fine. That's annoying. Oh, there's a Tauros. Should I catch? Yeah, I should catch this. The Tauros, I think, is 5%, so it's on the rare end, but it's not as rare as some other things. Uh, I'm going to use a Silver Raz here. Cool. 
cool. Got Tauros. Um, and Parasect is going to evolve. thing that saved me there was the two controller fight. Yeah, that fight usually goes well, but every once in a while you'll be in Aqua Jet Range from Kabutops Tops or Amistar will freeze you with Ice Beam. Yeah. And then things get very messy. Um, okay. But now I can do the rarely seen strat of the mom heal. <laughs> mom heal. That's awesome. It's Venonat Central here. There's another Tauros. Again, even though it's rare, it's the last thing I caught, so it's more common to spawn. Alright, so you did not get a Tangela, correct? I did not. Um, Wild Vile Plume? Good shit. <laughs> forgot that was even a thing. <laughs> That's the 1% on that route. Speaking of 1%, it'd be nice if Pinsir showed up. I wasn't going to catch Venonat and stuff until later, but um, I already have a Pokemon now in my quote-unquote catch chain, so... Yeah, I it's think not once you catch Tauros... Yeah. You're kind of blocked then already. I think I would rather see increased Venonat spawns than increased Toro spawns, honestly. And <laughs> I got another Tauros anyways, so. Let me grab this as well. Yeah, because Venonat's already pretty common, so. Potential increase, I think, is lower. Oh, what? Come on. Tangela. Alright, that should be Primeape evolving. So now all I need on this route is the pincer.
All right. Oh, whoops, ran into that by accident. Another natural Tauros, come on. All right, so. We mentioned earlier about the Squirtle. Neither of us are going to hit 60 catches for it, most likely. At least not in time to, like, effectively level up that Squirtle. So I'm going to do the alternative, which is chain 11 Pidgeys. Because when you have a chain of 11 Pokemon, you pretty much guarantee the special spawns to show up when you enter a route, and Squirtle is the special spawn in Seafoam Islands, which is where I'm headed next. Yeah, and it's specifically the special spawns, not just rare spawns in general. So because Pinsir here is a normal spawn that's a 1% encounter, um, doing any sort of catch chaining won't actually help the Pinsir spawn. I know it's a question I always get. And that works the same for any of those 1% spawns. So Kangaskhan, Tratini isn't technically 1%, but Tratini as well. So yeah, if you enjoyed the content of catching 5 Growliths earlier, you're really going to love this content of catching 11 Pidgeys. <laughs> Um. Oh, this is pretty bad. This is about the point in any PB attempt where you would start giving up on your PB. Yeah. <laughs> for Pitzer. Yeah, it's just a brutal section. And, like, this is the only... I mean, technically, the route next to us also has Pinsir. Like, if we kept going and went to 14, Pinsir's there as well. But it's still 1%. Um, and this one... This spot here is just a little bit better because you can respawn the route. Um, if I had repels, what I would probably do is, like, go further on the route to spawn many more things. And then um, repel reset and, like, make my way all the way back. But... Um, yeah, it's not really worth it. You can see enough grass. Like, I get six or five or six things to spawn pretty much every time. I know my personal record on Route 15 is an hour. Or just over <laughs> an hour. So. This is why the estimate is as high as it is. Yeah, this category is normally very completable in about five hours, ten minutes, even with the worst, or when things are going okay in average luck. But yeah, five hours or so seems to be about average. Yeah, but you could go a lot worse. What was that? That was a pit. Oh, boy. Shiny before Pinsir incoming? I mean, probably. <laughs> so, you might be joking, but 
I was grinding for Dratini in, in a run one time, and I saw a shiny Dragonair before I saw a Dratini. Oh. <laughs> that always feels nice. I know two weeks ago, I was doing a run of this, and I found a shiny Bellsprout gear. And the next time I respawned the route, I got a pincer. So what you're saying is I should shiny hunt for Bellsprout. I'm not necessarily saying that. <laughs> He's not saying you shouldn't. It might be a good time to start chaining them, though. Yeah. <laughs> Got another Tauros, of course. It's always scary to respawn this route as well because you can still see the grass from the door. So there's always that chance of something popping into existence as you deload. So what I'll typically try to do is wait until something spawns. And as soon as it spawns and I see it's not a pincer, I walk in the door. That way I know because usually, not always, but usually one thing at a time will spawn unless you've like just entered a, an area. Um... So I know if something spawns and it's not Pinsir, I know Pinsir isn't spawning somewhere. What was that? That was a better net. Okay. Yeah, I made the mistake of letting a Pinsir D spawn once. And I never want to do it again. I think this is my last Pidgey. Oh, come on, you brown scissor Pokemon. Just appear. Okay, so I'm going to take a little detour. And now that I've caught a bunch more Pokemon, I'm going to go get that Charmander, since neither of us have one yet. Oh my god, there's a Squirtle down there. I'm just kidding. That's because of the chain. I, yeah, I, was, I wasn't going to say anything, but I was like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> of course there's I, a Squirtle. Was convincing? That was very convincing. I had to think about it for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so I could catch that Squirtle, but it's a lot lower level than the one I'm going to be able to get in Seafoam. Yeah, the level is actually a pretty big difference to the point where I'm not even convinced that catching a Squirtle early if you see it the first time throughout 25 is even worth it. Yeah. Okay, I'm out of repels. Or, I'm out of floors. Do I even have money? I do. That's good enough. So we're probably also going to see a zooming... Oh wait, I forgot. I'm supposed to go the other way. A zooming Lapras. <laughs> yeah, zooming Lapras. It's better to enter from this side of Seafoam. Come on, Pinsir. Where are you? There's the zooming Lapras. There's another zooming Lapras. <laughs> another zooming Lapras. Yeah, we did bring up before that Pikachu really doesn't have an opportunity to catch Lapras. You do see a lot of Lapras when you're surfing to Seafoam Islands. 
but you can't catch them because the sword will catch is much more important. Yeah, and yeah. catching and as something As soon as else, you catch yeah. something, it breaks your chain. So, but you can see, that's a good example of how common it, the, the catch chain makes these rare spawns. It turns things that are less than 1% into the most common thing on the route. Yeah, and it's a very sudden change once you hit 11. Or yeah. Catch change. Just suddenly, you see the rare, or the special spawns just consistently. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure there is technically a bump at like five or six as well, but it's just eleven makes it almost. Minuscule. Yeah. Yeah, because I tried doing a six chain in one of my very first alternate Pokemon runs, and it still took me a half hour to find Squirtle. Yeah. Alright, that's nothing. The nice thing is, once I see a pincer, I'll pretty much be guaranteed to catch it. I'm going to save before encountering the battle. Um, and unless I'm mixing up, I know this happens in Swish. I'm pretty sure it happens here, too. Uh, when you reload the game, your encounters stay. I'm about 99% sure you're right on that. Yeah, I know that's I know for a fact that's true in Sword and Shield, but I'm pretty sure it's true here. So I'm gonna fight this coach trainer as well. This is the one Etiquette was talking about earlier. With the three evolutions. It's not super clean, but Zapdos can get the job done with the two controller fight. And this one also gives me five more rare candies. Another Tauros. Another Tauros. How long have you been looking for Pinsir? I honestly don't know what time I started. I think we're going on pretty close to 20 minutes, if not already past 20 minutes. That wouldn't surprise me. Whoops. Whoops. Charmander. Yeah, and like obviously this isn't how probability works, but you can think that roughly for every five Tauros we see, we should see one pincer. So we've seen, I mean, not counting the ones that were because of my quote unquote catch chain, we've probably seen 15 to 20 of them. So we should have seen pincer by now, um, just based on that. But you know, each each roll is done independently, so doesn't necessarily mean for every hundred Pokemon I'll see a pincer. Yeah, you entered Route 15 about 22 minutes ago. Backing. Awesome. I did evolve two things, so that's a minute. <laughs> I'm not too worried about it, but like, what if I run out of lures? <laughs> I can always just buy more. I have plenty yeah, of money. You have plenty yeah. to buy more. It's just annoying. It feels bad to do it, but I think I had to do that one time. It's 
spawn something. Come on. Yeah, this route occasionally just chooses not to spawn things. It's just like the Dratini area where you have a very thin strip of land, so... So usually, if things go well for both sides, generally by the time Pika is done or finishing up Seafoam, Eevee is like somewhere in Victory Road. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm in Seafoam right now. So that can give you a good idea of how not good that is. That pincer. Well, and you're in Seafoam with a fairly slow Stratini as well. Yeah, exactly. And like, outside of this pincer section like the ev section hasn't been bad like all the right. fights have gone well everything has spawned pretty close to immediately like abra was the biggest troll and even that wasn't bad so this is just i just got a chancy to spawn as it was deloading the area thank god it wasn't a pincer Yeah, the Eevee side is fairly consistent on this route outside of Pinsir and Moltres, maybe. Yeah. There are a couple of things that can be problematic from time to time, but those are the two big ones. Um, how many Pokemon do I make appear each time? I honestly make Pokemon appear until they stop appearing. Um, I think this route allows for six things to be spawned at a time, but waiting for six doesn't always make sense. Yeah, I usually wait for four or five on that route. That one actually spawned six immediately. That was kind of funny. I've tried to do some testing on this route to try to figure out what the best way to get as many Pokemon as possible as quickly as possible is, and the only conclusion I've come to is that it's very inconsistent. Yeah, yeah. basically. <laughs> By the time I just got nothing to spawn for probably like 10 seconds. And now one thing, two. Oh, I stand corrected. Spawn one more thing before I go in the door. All right. Jinx is being very mean to me. I think this Jinx has eaten more Ultra Balls than Zapdos did. That's pretty funny. Ah, right, there's another Chansey. Sometimes I think that Chansey is more common than Pinsir on this route. It feels like it. There's another Chansey. <laughs> oh, man. This is actually crazy. Oh, my God. There we go. How like many I, Ultra Balls was that? That was like over 10 for sure. Like I could come back, but. Oh, this sucks. Yeah. The problem I mean, you might be able to do that. 
you have to do it any eventually. Yeah, it's just a matter of like moving forward. Yeah, getting Pikachu like because Pikachu's basically ready to trade now, and I still have to do a whole gym and catch three more things. Well, we can do like the little trade just for like Charmander and stuff. Yeah, I guess. Um. Yeah, because Dratini's level 29, so we can do that at any point, really. Um, yeah, I mean, whenever you want to do a trade, we can do it. Yeah, let me just catch Shelter, and then we can do that. Alright. Uh, just Dratini, Squirtle, and Charmander. What do you want from my side? Uh, just anything that evolves. So, like, the fossil, coughing, stuff like that. Yeah, that works. Ah, go away, Tauros. I'd really love for a shelter to spawn, though. There's one. Yeah, one of the interesting things about Diploma is that you can... That you... You can do as much routing as you want before the run starts, but then something is inevitably going to go wrong. Yeah. So you have to kind of fix things up and Wait. change your routes, oh my change God. your trades as you go. I that Venonat looked or Venomoth looked like a pincer, I swear. <laughs> Alright, let's do the trade. Alright, let me Yeah. Josh get a code for us. Ooh, a wild cloister. I actually didn't even know that was a thing. I did not either. All right, you got the code? Yep. Okay, I sent it. Um, crap. Uh. Thing. So I should give you Omanyte and I think Omanyte's the only thing left it really needs to evolve or like level up evolve. I guess I can give you um, like Weeping Bell. Yeah, yeah. Stone Evolutions work too. So I should just... Yeah, this is, right. this is the smallest trade. Uh, Dratini makes things awkward because it's a triple evolution, so we have to trade it back and forth a couple times. Right. And Squirtle as well. Charmander, sometimes you can get away with not doing this, but this trade, this little mini trade has to happen just because of Dratini and Squirtle, no matter what. Oh, I got the error message. Uh -huh. All right, so Charmander to the party, Squirtle to the party. Great, Articuno time. Chini to the party. Uh, it's Pincer time. Right, Pincer's gonna show up. Ha ha ha! No, please. <laughs> Eventually.
Pincer's, Pincer's like Pokemon model always takes me by surprise too because it's like so upright and it's not the right color of brown that I'm expecting. <laughs> like I'm just so used to seeing Tauros, I expect it to be more tan than like that pale brown. Ah, another Chansey. That's the fourth one I've seen. Oh my god, I ran out of lures. I actually ran out of super... I had 15 super lures. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I would definitely go buy more, though. Oh my god. Or maybe now is the opportunity to just leave and do it later. I don't want to do that. <laughs> just give me the pincer. Every one of those options is bad. <laughs> oh my god. That's so bad. I've never... Wow. Okay. Super lore. <sighs> yeah, I'll buy. All right. If I run out of super lures again, we're going to have a talking game. Pincer's been about 35 minutes, I think. Yeah, 35 minutes about. Oh my god. If I... I was gonna say, if I just get to this route and it instantly spawns, I'm gonna be mad. I'll be happy that it's here, but... You know, before the, all this started, I was thinking, you know what? It would be cool if we PB'd in the marathon because, like, our PB isn't super good. True. But that's not happening. Wait, what just spawned over there? I saw something spawn in the grass, but it didn't... It got away from the screen too quickly. And I know Pinsir can walk kind of quickly, so... Okay. Oh, man. Definitely not a good article, you know. Luckily, you probably have time for a bad Articuno right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there we go. You probably have time to beat the game at this rate. <laughs> Get your own Moltres. <laughs> There's a pincer. All right, let me save. There we go. Don't run away. Good lord. Silver raspberry time. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, I should have called that. Whatever. Encounters should persist through saves and let's go, yes. Yeah, I think they do, but I honestly haven't tested it in a while. I think every single time I load my game on my main Let's Go Pikachu file, it has the same encounters there. Okay. As far as I know. Well, we might get to find out. No, we won't. All right, cool. Pinsir has been acquired. Charmander, calm down. You're gaining so many levels. That's good. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't learn Dragon Rage, it's not good. Alright, then I think as soon as you get 
execute, we can do the big trade, right? Uh, execute and poly whirl. Right, yeah, poly whirl. Yeah. Or I might end up giving you a poly wag that you can evolve yourself. I'll, I'll get a second one to get poly yeah. but. Either way, that works. So I'm kind of in cleanup mode, but my cleanup <laughs> includes getting a Scyther. So we get round two with, with that route. Yeah, I hope you guys liked the scenery there. You get to see a lot more of it. Maybe. Most, hopefully not. But we do have time for it, so. Don't worry, if we have time left over, I can just ride Kangaskhan around and pet Pikachu a bunch. <laughs> the content I'm really here for. Exactly. Alright, I'm going to try to remember to save for Snorlax. One thing that Snorlax has uh, different from the other static encounters is that Snorlax actually can run away from you. So if your catch goes particularly bad, then you lose your Snorlax. So it is actually important that we save for it. Snorlax is the rare encounter in uh, Cerulean Cave but you don't really want to have to resort to that. Definitely not. There are two Snorlaxes in the game, but you want to not catch the first one because it's hard to kill and it gets a defense boost. The second one, you have much higher level Pokemon and has an attack boost instead, so. Yeah, much easier to kill Snorlax when it's not defense boosted and when you have a level 50 Zapdos instead of a <laughs> level 30 Pikachu. Yeah. I think the, the Snorlaxes also do respawn, but I think they require you to beat the Elite Four for them to respawn, so... I mean, I guess we wouldn't have to resort to getting one in Sterling Cave. We would just resort to you flying down to Route 12 and getting one. Yeah, but then if I forgot to save two. <laughs> well, you do beat the Elite Four, so you could probably go back to Celadon also. Yeah. So you get two chances. All right, so I didn't use a Repel here. Usually kind of difficult to get through there, but that wasn't too bad. Don't use a Lure. I had a Lure active that whole time. Okay, then. <laughs> Alright, well I got Snorlax first ball, so no worries. Very cool. You caught a Tauros, right? Yes, I have Tauros. Maybe I shouldn't have, but <laughs> at this rate. All right, so this guy here is kind of annoying. Um, he has a Nidoking, and we don't have a move that can one-shot it. Um, however, we're going to use... Well, we don't have a 100% accurate move that can one-shot it, so I'm going to have to use Hydro Pump here. 
With my special attack, if I was level 50, I actually would be able to Psychic, I'm pretty sure, but um, I j I'm only level 49, so. Yeah, just... you get a boost. Yeah. Wait, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Yeah, you get a boost in the damage formula at any level that ends with a 0, 3, 5, or 8. So there's actually a pretty big difference between level 49 and level 50 in any of your damage rolls. Yeah, in, in sort of like the beginner routes for these games, you definitely want to make sure you're level 50 for like this section. Um, and you're strategically using rare candies throughout to try and make sure you're reaching those thresholds. Um, you can get by at level 49 for this section. I mean, obviously, I'm currently doing it, but um, that's typically a little bit more risky. Yeah, in catch em all categories, we usually try to reserve our rare candies for things that are not Starmie as much as possible. But occasionally you do want to use a rare candy on Starmie just in case. This Starmie is very good, so it doesn't really need it. Yeah, and with the, like, with the extra catches too, you're gaining extra experience anyways. So like, I've used... So normally, uh, a world record route if you want to call it that, of this, would probably use four rare candies total on Starmie. Um, I have used two rare candies on Starmie, and I'm almost exactly where I would be normally, experience-wise. Um, like, it just happened to work out that way because of the catches and everything. Well, the uni at level 33, right? Yeah, 33. Got my holding at 32. Um, I've got everything evolved that you need. I'm just making my way through the rest of the game. Um, so I'm actually at a really good HP value here. Um, the next fight. You can go into the next fight without healing as long as you're outside of quick attack range. And quick attack typically doesn't do any more than like 27 HP. And I'm at 29 and I'm going to level up. So um, I don't have to worry about healing before this next fight. So I'm just looking for a far fetch. The devil. Farfetch is another one that I'm expecting it to be a different color than it is when it spawns. Farfetch is also low key one of the hardest Pokemon to catch in the game. It really is. Yeah. It's something I don't mind using my good raspberries on, actually. Yeah, same. Unfortunately, I'm out of good raspberries, but hopefully it cooperates. There are, a there, few, there are a few unexpected Pokemon that are very difficult to catch. Farfetch'd is one of them, Ditto is another. Although Ditto's hard to catch in most games, I think. Yeah. Alright, so I finally have all eight badges. I can make my way over to Victory Road. Um, there are two Pokemon specifically I need to catch on my way to Victory Road, and once I do those catches, uh, we're probably going to trade again for the second to last time. Um, the main, yeah. main focus with this one is going to be anything that needs to evolve should uh, get traded to the other person. Uh, we want to make sure that we have time to evolve things on the opposite game. For example, like uh, Kerbis has Sandshrew right now that needs to evolve to Sandslash, but he doesn't want to evolve to Sandslash himself because then I don't get the deck entry for Sandshrew. So uh, we'll, you know, trade stuff like that back and forth. I've already given him mostly everything that I would need to evolve. 
Uh, the only exceptions are the two things I have to catch coming up. Actually, wait. I forgot the two controller this fight. There we go. I was going to go to Dojo, but I'm just going to look for Scythe for a while, because you're getting close to the point where you can trade me. Yeah. Um, do you want me to pump candies into Dragonair, or should I bother? Uh, I don't think you should bother. I'm okay. going to have extra time anyway. Exactly. That's what I was thinking. So thankfully, I don't have to catch anything other than Scyther on this route right now. Although, I might hang around. If I get a Scyther, I might hang around and still try to get a Tauros, just so you don't have to trade it to me. Okay. I should actually start looking at how balanced the trades are right now, though. Rival 5 down. Yeah, I'm not going to catch that Taurus, so I'm going to hold off. Hey, look, a Scyther and a you Tauros. you got to be kidding me, dude. That's all on my screen right now. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> Just instantaneous, pretty much. Oh, my God. Look, guys, I'm winning. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, you are. <laughs> this Scyther will run away from me. Just watch. Guaranteed. That's... Same odds. Same odds to appear. That's kind of funny. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit happy that happened. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> I wish it happened in reverse, but uh, I, I, it's still funny. That's let's go in a nutshell. Yeah. Diploma anyway. So we're gonna grab these golden raspberries. These are gonna be really useful for, like I said, the Pokemon in Cerulean Cave. Um, and then yeah, I'm just looking for ideally two Poliwags, but I want definitely one right now. And then a Execute as well. Execute will be in the grass. Of course I have two Magikarps. Why would I not? First ball Scyther. God. That's so funny. There we go. So I'm just going to try to count the trades and see where we're at. All right. Yeah. Take your time. <laughs> Some standing content. Yeah, so to try and reiterate the colors again for everybody, um, anything that's a bluer color is a Pokemon that we don't have. Anything that's a yellower color is a Pokemon that we do. Um, light blue are just general Pokemon we don't have. Dark blue are Pokemon that we don't have but are going to receive from the other person directly. Um, and then the darker yellow Pokemon are Pokemon that we're planning on trading to the other person. 
Uh, so, for example, when I mark um, execute right now, I'm going to mark it in dark yellow because it's a Pokemon that I need to send over to Kerbis. Of course, it's a little presumptuous of me to actually mark it before I catch it, so I'm going to unmark it real quick. <laughs> It looks like we're basically even on trades. I'll have one extra thing to send to you, I think. All right, I am officially ready to trade. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, just getting through the decks thing. I already sorted my box, so it should be easy enough for me to do. Do you have Poliwag already? I got I got two Poliwags. I'm just going to send him that, and he can evolve it. Yeah, that works. Yeah, that's fine. All right, uh, we need a code. There you go. All right. Um, that, that, and that. All right. I'm gonna try to make the next one easier. I'm actually, looking at the screen this time. <laughs> it wasn't this too bad. I... It was the Diglett was in the bottom corner. I wasn't expecting it. Yeah, that one wasn't too bad. Other than Diglett. All right. So this is gonna be the biggest trade by far. We'll probably wind up doing like 30 or so. I want to say. Most important thing about this trade is that we get everything to the other player that they need to evolve. So, like, I have a Gloom that Etiquette will evolve to a Vile Plume and trade back to me in the last trade. So, we got to make sure we get all those evolutions done. Yeah, those will be the first ones that were really focused on and then it's just going to backfill everything else how many things do you have to send to me that are level up evolutions I'm trying to figure that out okay dig lit um, Grimer, Voltorb, Seal. All right, send me, start sending me those just so I do ones that are in my party right now. Yeah, okay. Save me a little bit of menuing time. I'm pretty sure they should all be one level away. That's nice, okay. Yeah, Amoeba. The, the layout with the, the two trackers and everything looks really cool. Like, I'm actually... I'm very happy we finally have, like, one of these runs. Even if it's not the best quality run with the pincer and everything, I'm very happy we have one of these runs now, like, in one video. Because normally when we do this, we just stream our own perspectives. But actually True. having, like, a production value of having them both at the same time is really nice. I realize you don't have to evolve this, but it's in my party. <laughs> Yeah, that's fine. It's a Venom off. All right, so my party right now has Grimer. Oh, you gave you got me Kabuto already, right? I did not. Oh, okay. I saw it. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think when we first tried this category, we weren't really expecting it to be as good as it is. At least I wasn't. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I'm taking forever. I'm trying to think of things I need to not get rid of. Like, I can't get rid of Gyarados yet. I can't get rid of Aerodactyl yet. Oh, I need to give you the Poliwag. That's what it is. Oh, right. I think that's the only other thing that has to evolve. We can do the trade evolutions as well. All right. Um, let me do... Not yet, yeah, not yet. 
Give you one of the polywags. I have to give you execute as well, actually. Forgot about that. I still need slowpoke, or I need to send you slowpoke and seal. Goldeen. Yes, Goldeen. I think those are the last three for level ups. Yeah, and then just general evolution Pokemon, it looks like I've got... You gotta send me, um, Shelter. That might be it. Oh yeah, you didn't mark Bulb. Or no, you haven't gotten no, Bulbasaur. Yeah, Bulbasaur is in early or in yeah. post game. Yeah, I don't have Bulbasaur yet. That's a quick one. I learned last night that Bulbasaur always hits exactly level sixteen if you just get the experience from you two. That's awesome, actually. Um, I'm just giving you random stuff. I think. Uh, did you ever get your Tauros, or you want me to send me my uh, send you mine? One. You did? Okay. Yeah. Tauros and Scyther spawned at the same time, pretty much, and then the Tauros was in the way, so I just caught it. Alright, I'll unmark that then. Uh, Kerbis also already has Starmie. I see you have that marked as something to trade later. Oh, yeah, you're right. Hmm. Yeah, that's one normally that I have to just... Yeah, okay. I think I just marked it by accident. Yeah. Starmie is something that we've used recently, I think, is kind of a... If Eevee needs an extra... Or if yeah. Eevee has an extra thing, just don't evolve Star you. Yeah, you can use it as a balancer. There's a few that are like that. It's like Kingler, uh, Marowak, Starmie. They can use, be used to balance traits. Yeah, I think those are the three big ones. Um, do I do trades after this one? Or trade evolutions? Uh, yeah, let's do that. So Machoke for Kadabra. Kadabra, right? Yep. Yeah. So I mentioned it earlier, but we want to we want to do the trade evolutions at the same time because even if like one side was doing an evolution, the other side wasn't. Uh, both sides would have to wait for the evolution to end, anyways. So you may as well use up that time by actually evolving. Um, and then. It's a small thing, but it is kind of nice to do, is um, Machamp and Alakazam actually learn moves when they evolve. So by doing those two specifically together, we're both clicking, no, don't learn this move at the same time. Um, although I think Alakazam technically just learns it because there's an empty move slot, but either way. Um, it depends on what level you are. Yeah, we both just waste that time, so it's fine. A very small optimization, but it counts. I didn't mark Venusaur, thank you. Luckily, because I have a partner, it's really easy to know which ones I don't have marked, because I'll go, wait, you didn't send me Venusaur. He'll go, yes, I did. I'll go, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be careful with that, though. You're probably going to be wrong sometimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, just send these two back. Or do the other trade evolution. Send them back. All right. Just because I already know where it is in the box. Yeah, exactly. 
I will definitely forget if I try to do another trade in the meantime. So then, Haunter for Graveler. Yes. Did you send me Shelter yet? Uh, no, I don't think I did. Okay, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure. It was, I think that's the only other Pokemon that I need to evolve. Where is Shelter? It's like middle row, column six. Middle ish row. It's below Golem. Oh, okay, yeah. No, I didn't send it to you yet. So I'll do Shelter next. Oh, and Goldeen. Oh, right. I even yeah. said Goldeen. Yeah. I just noticed that one. Right, I'm double checking to make sure I'm not missing anything else. Um, okay. Oh, I didn't send you back the golem. It doesn't matter. Yeah. At this I point... just don't want to forget because you like marked it. Oh, okay. Yeah, just send it back next. I still got a bunch of stuff I can send you. too early and canceled okay. it. So you joke about that sheep doing a PSR summer and PSR winter, but I mean, we're starting to get to the point with a lot of like these goofy categories and stuff that you honestly might be able to field two weekends worth. Um, I don't think we had quite enough submissions this time around to justify that. Like, we were even floating the idea of doing an extra day this time. Um, but it just didn't work out that way. What about Goldie? It's like, now I'm looking for something that needs to evolve still. Yeah, category extensions in general have really picked up this year. Yeah, it's nice to see. Yeah, it is nice to see. There are a lot of very fun ideas that have come out of it. I think just alt mains alone <laughs> makes for a lot of really interesting runs. Yeah, absolutely. Amoeba, something like that would be sick. Like a, a category extensions only marathon. It'd just be like a fun way to show off like these goofy categories. It'd be really cool. Even if it wasn't like a full weekend, if it was like a day or like two days or something. Um, okay. Yeah, no kidding, Amoeba. I had... I have way too many marathons this month. <laughs> I 
in the span of like three weeks, I went from maybe thinking I might have one marathon to having like four. But they're fun. These, these kind of things are always fun. Um, all right, so I got victory bell. Oh, it's my my victory bell back. Thank you. It even says that, doesn't it? It says welcome back, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so Golbat next. Alright, looks like I've got one, two, three, four, five, six Pokemon I could safely send you still. I have much more than that, so. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine. Because I can send you everything I have except for Zapdos. I still need to do Dojo. Yeah, I just need to keep the Gyarados and Aerodactyl. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. I never marked Ponyta Rapidash. Just never. <laughs> I looked over and they're blue. I'm like, what? <laughs> um, You know, I had noticed at Kogus Gym that you were down two Pokemon on the tracker. <laughs> And I meant to go through and look, and I just never noticed that. Yeah, like, I, I noticed the same thing, and I I literally just never looked. I was like, oh, well, I'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, I'm not usually worried unless my tracker says I have more things than it says. Yeah, that's a much worse situation. So here's Chansey. I'm giving you Tentacruel. Tentacruel. Why do I keep skipping over Parasect? How many more do you have? Uh, three that I can send you. I can send you Magmar, Hitmonchan, and Primate. Okay. Which, you have to go to Man... Well, I guess you don't have to go to Mansion. I was going to say, I could always just not give you Magmar, but then we're going to be uneven even more, so... Yeah. Okay... I'm at 120 now, after this trade. I'm at 107. But I still need to, yeah. I need to do a bunch of stone stuff. evolutions, some other stuff. All I have left to do is some stone evolutions. I don't actually catch, and elbow level ups. But I don't have to actually catch anything anymore, I don't think. Uh, what is it? I need Hitmonchan. Just one more after this, or two? Uh, I just have Magmar after this one. Okay. What am I getting? A oh, Weezing. And then, yeah, just Magmar.
up if I could find it. Okay. Solid. Yeah, so this one's it. Yep. Alright. Uh, no, I don't want Starmie to be my ride Pokemon. So my party looks good. I'm going to go ahead now and sort. Not by order caught, by Pokedex number. There we go. So this is where I can get the other Moonstone, since I didn't pick up the one earlier. Steal it from this little girl's bedroom. It must be done. Alright, so I think I just got rid of my lure. Um, I don't really need to catch anything here. Like, there, I just went the wrong way in Victory Road. Wow. Um... If I see a Rhydon, it's nice, but I don't need to get it now. It's actually very common in Cerulean Cave. Uh, and then this fight here is probably... If Archer is the stupidest fight in the game, Archer in Sylph Code, this is the most dangerous fight in the game. Um, this is Ace Trainer Naomi. There are two ways you can do this fight. I'm doing the safer strategy, which involves using two controllers. Um, and even with two controllers, things can go wrong. So, yeah. Uh, it basically hinges on you hitting a Hydro Pump. Yeah, playing this fight with one controller is terrifying because the Kangaskhan will two-shot you. So if you miss Hydro Pump or miss a range if you don't have a good enough Sarmi, you just lose basically yeah. and she I also is just a really powerful and unstoppable pokemon right josh <laughs> i wouldn't say that <laughs> <laughs> yeah she uh the kangaskhan does have sucker punch but it doesn't seem to like want to use it a lot of the it time it used it once on me and i was terrified because i had no idea it could do that yeah yeah it's very rare but if it happens and you didn't kill it turn one it potentially kills you unexpectedly. Luckily with two controller, as long as it doesn't go for Sucker Punch, you're usually safe. Because you always have the option to X Special Attack again if you miss Hydro Pump and Scald. Yeah. yeah. But, like, not only are you using a Hydro Pump, which is only 80% accurate, but you have to have a pretty darn good Starmie to even guarantee that that Hydro Pump kills if it hits. Yeah, I think it's not a perfect range until 134 special attack, which is not that common. Yeah. This Starmie has it for sure. Oh, yeah. I'm leveling up here. Uh, let's see. I'm at 144 special attack. And everything is evolving. Cool. That's Sand Slash and the other thing. No trio. Oh, let me mark those in gold, I know.
Um, so that is the last trainer battle I need to do before I get to do my own legendary bird catching. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's exciting. I, I need to get the Moltres here. Um, the actual fight against Moltres is usually pretty easy. Um, I'm going to save before it just in case bad things happen, but... Usually fine. Um, I'm also going to do the strength puzzle before, just because I can. Officer Jenny here gives us a free heal, so take that. So I'm just getting my stone evolutions out of the way. No, don't talk to Rapidash. Here's Moltres. Let me bring out the second controller. Save. Uh, so because we have a Starmie, you know, this is pretty easy fight. We can basically just X special and um, Scald. However, the Moltres does get like an Omni boost, so all of its stats get raised. And uh, it will outspeed us and has the move Air Slash, which can flinch us like that. Very cool. <laughs> Glad we got to show that off. Okay. One of my favorite parts of the fight. It did exactly 120 damage, too, so I just healed it all off with the Hyper Potion. All right. balls are we guessing from old trace ah uh, hoping Seven. it's like five <laughs> Ooh, that was a great throw Uh, four was the answer, by the way. Nice. Four is good. That's really not bad at all. Oh, I didn't deposit the Sand Slash and it gained three levels. All right, guys, this is your host, Ty Kevin. We're going to be transitioning over to Ranger Squid on the host for a bit until much later in the day. Thank you, Travis. Is this really all I need to level up? Yeah, you shouldn't have too much more to level up at this point. Alright, so now, actually, how many candies do I have? 14. Did I miss candy somewhere? I have like nine that <laughs> I'm not gonna use any of. Or two you, you, low. you used two on Dodrio and you also candy rapid ash, right? Yeah. Maybe that's normal. Right, so all I have to do is level up these Pokemon, but one of them that I have to level up happens to be Dragonair. Which needs a lot of levels. So We've got a bit of grinding to do, and the best place for me to do that, since I haven't completed the game, is Mansion, um, or Seafoam Islands, or Power Plant. Any of them really work, but Grimers are super common here, so I like to just chain Grimers for experience.
Alright, so full new party of things that need to evolve, which is nice. Already did that puzzle, so I can just talk to Jenny again, get healed up. Um, this here is the last trainer skip of the run. Um, just go like that. She's actually... Of the, the four trainer skips, if you even want to call the one, like, by Bill's house a trainer skip, because that one's just super free. But the, the other three, of the three, that one's easily the worst one to actually hit. Um, if you're if you're unprepared for that fight, it can be bad. If you know what you're, you should do if you hit it, like, if you have a backup for it, it's not terrible, but... So, you want to hear a fun fact? Sure. And expose myself in front of everyone. That trainer skip you just said is super free. I hit one of those trainers on my run that wound up being on Pika any percent record pace the other day. Oh my god, you did! Wow. I was just like holding my Joy-Con in a weird way, and my thumb slipped, and I just like ran over to the left on accident. The, the funny thing about that skip is literally my first playthrough, I saw those two trainers, and I was like, I wonder if I can do this, and it worked. And I was like, okay. So I've actually, other than the time I did all trainers in this game, I've actually never fought either of those two trainers. Like, because I was just curious in my casual playthrough of the game, and I did it happened to work. With the, with the Route 6 one. Oh, really? I didn't know about I was the Route 6 one. Trying for a while. to run between them to get a double battle. So I was oh. like, if I, if I go down the middle perfectly, I wonder if it'll be a double battle, and I just ran right through. That's pretty funny. Yeah, the Route 17 one, um, that was actually a slightly difficult fight back in the day uh, before we realized we could skip it. It's two uh, Psyducks, but they're it's like. High level work. They're kind of high level, yeah. Um, like they, they, their level basically matches the level of the Pokemon on the route. And if you remember, the the Pokemon on the route are like ten levels higher than you stop using your Eevee or Pikachu. So, all right. I realized this amoeba saying back less, in the day doesn't really work. Less than two years, actually. It feels like this game's been out forever. This November will be two years. Yep. The Eevee record is almost one year old. Almost. It'll be next month. The all obtainables record would have been older if not for somebody in this voice call. <laughs> <laughs> 11 nine. seconds, really? <laughs> nine seconds. Yeah, nine or seconds. nine, yeah. Ah. Uh. The, my all obtainables run left such a sour taste in my mouth because it was a really good run and then I spent five minutes looking for the right fossil. Yeah. And I just That's like I just never want to do that category again, like seriously. <laughs> it sucks. All obtainables always sounds really fun to me. Yeah. And Until then you're halfway through the run and you're grinding for a scyther or a Dratini. Yeah. You just hit something in the middle. Yep. That makes you wonder why you started three hours ago. <laughs> it's great when everything works out perfectly until that point, too, because it'll be like, you know, you start the runoff and you, you get the Moonstone to respawn correctly, and you're like, you know, this is perfect. You get your Ekans or your uh, Mankey Sandshrew on that route. Everything's working out real nice, and then... Everything just goes downhill when you spend 28 minutes looking for Kangaskhan. Because it's not like most speedruns where you'll kind of like lose time here or there. 
It's like things will go super well, and then you'll just lose 15 minutes to one thing. Pretty demoralizing. Well, even the record. You had a Kangaskhan run away, right? That, it was either that run, or it was my PB before that. But it's kind of funny, because I've only done that category recently in races. I just happened to PB three races in a row. Yeah. Because I don't really have the will to grind it either. I had 14 candies, so I need to get Dragonair to level 41. All right. Yeah. All right, hear me out. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the leaderboard. So the leaderboard is going to say the category is catch them all. And then there's going to be two subcategories for solo and co-op. And we're going to sneak diploma onto the main boards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down. This is the faster and less frustrating category and it's more true. fun <laughs> it's just it is more fun yeah yeah no but that the putting diploma on the main boards i think is something we just have to bring up again um i don't there's really no good way to oppose it from anybody it's just a matter of going through the proper channels for it Yeah, for anyone who wants to run this category themselves, we are slowly in the process of making the beginner notes more beginner friendly. Yeah, the like the notes that we have that that Josh made, they're pretty good, but they kind of assume that you run any percent because we never imagined that people would <laughs> jump into diploma without having run any percent. But it turns out a lot of people like to do that. Yeah, then people like Joker just come around and it's like, what's any percent? I have a five hour diploma time. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, like within a week of running any percent, he has a 308, so. Yeah. Just casually. Um. Okay, I need to do a little bit of box stuff. So I need this to go to my party. I think this is the only thing I have left to evolve. Um, at least via level up. Uh, let me just confirm. Yes. Okay, cool. Oh, I should have healed at the same time. I have four Magmars on my screen right now. <laughs> so I've noticed that you're at a catch chain of 10 on Grimers now. Are we going shiny hunting? plan i 100% agree jim freak absolutely oh, has yeah. the game knowledge he's yeah he got very good at the game just from diploma alone i think as it stands right now he could definitely get like 304 305 yeah oh yeah absolutely Uh, so yeah, Elite Four isn't too scary outside of the last two fights. Um, Agatha can be kind of scary, but because I have to have other Pokemon in my party anyways to level them up, um, I always have the second controller to bail me out. Oh, I just remembered I didn't pick up the rare candy on the top floor here, so I actually have 15. I think I should have scalded that Jinx. My special attack is high enough, but I went for the pump anyways. <laughs> I just got a 36 multiplier from that Grimer. Holy moly. 36. Because it's a catch chain. Oh, right. Yeah. The, the funny thing about the catch chain stuff is if you're... Um, so you get a bonus for having a new Pokemon, and then you also get a bonus for being on a catch chain. And it just so happens that being on a two catch chain is equivalent to getting the new Pokemon bonus. 
So if you're not paying attention and like, we don't do this anymore, but we used to struggle for experience in Mount Moon. So there was a, a time when you would actually catch like a couple of Geodudes if you see them just for a little bit of extra experience. Um, you actually get the same experience from each one. Um, but it just so happens that the, the multiplier is the same. The multiplier goes up every time you reach like the next stage of the catch chain. So like, I think it's uh, 1, 6, 11, 21, 31. I'm not going to break my chain for this Chansey. I'm going shiny hunting. Heck yeah. And one nice thing about using or not using many rare candies is I'm at the right level because of all the catches, but I uh, don't have the friendship turnarounds on Bruno. That does also mean you don't get power of love on Agatha, though. Yeah, well... <laughs> it's a tough trade-off, I know. Yeah. Uh, the 4th Gen Gamer was doing one of the DLC Sword and Shield runs the other day. Um, and he didn't have enough defense to actually live on the final fight, even at plus one defense. And he ended up winning because on his second try, he power of loved and lived on one. Oh my god. And, like, the, the idea behind the fight is you go to plus one defense on turn one and survive, and then you use Endure on turn two to go down to one HP and then use Reversal with maximum power. So because he Power of Loved, he was already at one HP as well. It's a really cool fight. That that speedrun is actually going to be in the marathon later, Um, if you guys are around yes. tomorrow. So you should definitely check that out. It's in about 25 hours, I think. Lots of marathons still to happen. Oh no, the Scrimer's trying to ruin my catch chain. I like how you're just casually catching a bunch of Pokemon. <laughs> oh, man. All right, I have Charizard. I only need three more Dragonair levels, and then I can just run around on Kangaskhan until I get finishes. All right, so Agatha here. Um, the way this fight's supposed to go is she uses Glare on turn one. On turn two... She'll use Crunch, um, and after turn two, we'll be fully set up. So we'll use a full restore on turn three. She'll use Crunch again, and then we can sweep. Um, she has a chance to either attack you on turn one, or sometimes she goes for Poison Jab and randomly poisons you. Like I've never seen before, except for in the freaking uh, Eevee record right now. <laughs> That's still the only time I've ever seen that. Actually, it happened twice to me. It happened uh, for ESA Corona Relief. I did Let's Go, and it happened during that run, too. Only two times I've ever seen it. Say that again? What happened on Agatha? So, jab. yeah, instead of getting Crunch on turn three, she would Poison Jab and poisoned me both times. And then both times, I actually, Power of Loved, healed my poison on the, the Weezing. I've never seen that. Yeah. That's crazy. Happened in the, the current Eevee record and then in a marathon run a couple months ago. And those are the only two times I've ever seen it or even heard of it from another runner. Oh, yeah, I've watched a lot of Let's Go runs and done a lot myself, and I've never seen Poison Jab except for those two cases. There's so much cursed shit that we've only seen happen <laughs> once or twice ever in yeah. this game. Like, it's actually scary. It's like the, the Hitmonlee faint. Yep. That one I've only ever heard of happening once. I've been... I'm, like, not convinced it's real because I didn't see it. That's same, yeah. <laughs> I got, um, I got Sludge Bomb from Champion's Vile Plume about a month ago. Oh, no! Hi. No, you didn't! Don't do this to me! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Instant death. I was about, I was at, like, 30 health. Yeah. Oh, I still don't have turnarounds on, Ag like, I just finished Agatha. I bet I'll have him here on Lance. Although Lance, I actually don't use any super effective moves, so maybe not. Yeah, you only have 
You only have one super effective move left, right? Uh, two. Because I have oh, to two, use. Yeah. Um, yeah. I forgot Slowbro. Slowbro, yep. But yeah, so I have been sludge bombed by that Bioplume now and died. I hate that. And I remember it specifically because Wartab was in the chat and he made a comment about it and then it happened. <laughs> See, so it's really Wartab's fault. Oh, 100%. The, the worst part about that, though, is it not only killed your run, is it, like, ruined the PSR community for Let's Go. <laughs> like, we all have assumed that forever, that it wasn't possible, and now it is possible, so we all have to worry about it. You can't do anything about it, though. You can't no. change your play. Sometimes it's just the best play. And, like, even though there's a possibility, it's so rare. How many times have people done that fight and it didn't happen? We risk way more common things on a regular basis. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Naomi. Oh, I did yeah. an elixir! Uh-oh. Oh, no. Um. All right. I can two controller... Elixir and use a Thunderbolt on this Aerodactyl. There we go. There you go. And then I can also heal during the battle. That's fine. How did I forget to Elixir? Wow. Oh, there's the turnarounds. Rip. So I regret to report that in about a minute, world record is going to pass us by. No, it's still so possible. Close. I believe. Just one pincer away. <sighs> yeah, like Pokemon runs in general, a lot of them nowadays don't really have a ton of this anymore, but it used to be that a lot of runs like, being a good runner wasn't necessarily who could follow the route the best. It was who could adapt to crazy things happening the best. Um, nowadays, not in necessarily in a bad way, but nowadays a lot of runs are fairly scripted in what happens. Um, a lot of things are figured out um, and laid out in routes, uh, which is really convenient as a runner. But at the same time, you don't get that same sort of like, oh no, this happened, what do I do? I think it's really good for getting people into the series as a speedrun. Definitely. But there's definitely merit to both of them. Which is nice that we still have runs like this that require a fair amount of adaptability. Yeah. Well, that's what makes category extensions good in general, is they're not right. as heavily routed out, I think. Oh yeah, absolutely, Amoeba. I wasn't trying to take anything away from like top runners and stuff like that. Like it's still a, a very good skill. It's just, like, it's a lot easier to complete most runs nowadays than it used to be. Um, like, I'm thinking specifically of the Gen 1 catch em all run back, like, four years ago. Like, to be a top runner of that game, it wasn't necessarily, like, who was the, the fastest at menuing, who was the luckiest or anything like that. A lot of times it was, like, who fixed the thing that went wrong the best. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's really fun to have categories like this. Yeah, I mean, even in, in Let's Go any percent, which, as far as the fights go, is extremely consistent, there still are moments where you're like, oh god, what do I do here? Yeah. Well, and Let's Go will always have the I'm two catches behind where I need to be right now. What do I do? Yeah, absolutely. All right, I need to heal anyways. I 
I don't know exactly what my special attack is, but I know it was godlike, so I'm going for the... I'm going, and I'm risking the sludge bomb. I'm sorry for bringing that up. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I would have done it anyways. I should have never told you that sludge bomb is a risk. I saw S. It was solar beam, but I saw S, and I was like, oh no! <laughs> Yeah, since we didn't talk about it earlier, uh, um, usually we set up an X special attack on this Vile Plume because it always goes for Solar Beam, which is a two turn move, so we have an extra turn for setup. And as far as I know, the one time I got Sludge Bomb is the only time I've ever heard of that happening, so. Yeah, I. Like I said, the first time I ever heard of it happening was like five minutes ago, so. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, yeah. Looks like we have. I have 20 things to send to you, and you have 18 to send to me. Alright, that's not too bad. So, like, with the plan I have, I mentioned, like, those toss up catches earlier. If. I think it's if Pikachu gets four out of the seven toss ups and Eevee gets the other three, then it winds up with the trades being perfectly even. Assuming everything else goes normally. I think in this run, we both caught Tauros, so that shifted it one in Pika's favor, and then... What else did I do? I must have evolved something I shouldn't have. I don't remember what it was, though. But being within two or three trades of perfectly even is generally my goal. Right. So now since I actually don't have anything left to do, I'm just going to organize my box and put all the things I need to trade at the top. Yeah, I've got a... I'm in the Hall of Fame now. I need to watch credits. Um, can skip the cutscene at the end of credits, but you have to sit through most of it. And then... I need to make my way into Cerulean Cave. Um, and I really only have two things to get there. I have to get Lickitung, I have to get Mewtwo. So um, then I have to do Stone Evolutions. I have to get the, the Bulbasaur. I forgot about that, but that's really quick. Um, yep, everything else is evolved. Yeah, I think as, far as, as far as I can see, that's everything. All right, very cool. So we've almost hit the end. Honestly, for a 30 plus minute pincer section, this time still isn't bad. Yeah, other than that, this run was pretty solid for the most part. I always love looking at the Let's Go Pikachu box at the end of these. Where you just have hordes of Growlits and Pidgeys <laughs> and Grimers. Yeah, it's beautiful. What yeah, am I next? There's one more. star there we go right the moment you've all been waiting for we're bringing in all the good ride Pokemon 
why is it not working? I'm confused. Wait, what are you trying to do? Ride Pokemon in Mansion. Oh yeah. Oh, duh. There he is. Pikachu in the pouch. Ah, uh -huh, it's awesome. Snorlax is pretty good too. I think I might actually like Snorlaxes more than Kangaskhan's. Snorlax is funny, yeah. Cause you're just like holding on for dear life. Absolute unit. Ah, uh, rip five hours. All right. So, like I said, very quick section here. Um, I need to... I need to get a couple things real quick. Bulbasaur. I also need to take a quick pit stop. Um, this is like borderline faster than some alternatives, but it's it's a pretty swag strat, so I like it. Yeah, I already traded the Onyx, so you can ride Onyx too. Oh god. You can go catch another Onyx. I could. Aerodactyl to my party, this to my party. Um, I'm gonna do this real quick. Oh, I can't do this. I have to go to Mount Moon. <laughs> trainers. Yeah, you wouldn't want to fight extra trainers right now. You definitely don't have like 10 minutes. <laughs> Definitely looks like I speed up when I dismount the game this time. It does, doesn't it? That's funny. Alright, so I'm gonna quickly duck in here and grab Bulbasaur. Um I have to catch two things, and like Jay Ash mentioned earlier, if you're uh if even if the only thing I catch is the Mewtwo, I'll get enough experience to hit 16. Uh, I also said no, I don't want Bulbasaur, which was kind of mean, so I am sorry. Do we want Sailor Pikachu or Safari Pikachu? <laughs> Safari's cute. I'm a big fan of Safari. So I didn't even intentionally do this, but this is kind of funny. I accidentally put... So I had to switch to use Aerodactyl as my ride Pokemon, so that way I could get to uh, Cerulean Cave easily. And then I accidentally put Gyarados as my ride instead of, like, uh, Rapidash. But that actually kind of helps, because uh, Gyarados is a water ride Pokemon. Alright, so all I'm looking for is Lickitung. Not the most common thing, but also not the most rare, so. Should be able to get it, hopefully, pretty quickly. Yeah, we talked earlier about how if Pikachu doesn't find Chansey somehow, it's pretty common in Cerulean Cave, and you could see that here. 
they're basically everywhere. There's all right. Lickitung spawned on me, so we're good. Oh yeah, I can I can use Pika for pow. One of my balls didn't throw. Weird. All right. Make cool. sure if you use Pika for pow, you turn on the animations. You think I have it yet? Yeah, you have to have it. No way you don't. Oh. Angus Khan was jealous. <laughs> Ooh. Did you give it attention? Oh, you did give it attention. Get out of here. I'm trying to find a trainer. Like, oh, you're on a chain. That's why there's a chancy. Yeah, I'm on like a 22 chain. All right, get rid of the lure. Don't need it anymore. One more Pokemon left to catch. All right. Time for Pika Papau. Oh wait, Pikachu's not in my party. Yeah, I'm an Pikachu's idiot. Not. <laughs> Dude, Kangaskhan doesn't even have any good moves. All right, so for this Mewtwo, um, we are going to be taking it on with a level 45 Gyarados. Uh, however, this Mewtwo only has two attacking moves. It has uh, Psychic and it has uh, Swift. Swift is a spread move, meaning in double battles, it's going to do less damage. Um, and in case you didn't notice, I just Mega Evolved the Gyarados. And Mega Gyarados is part dark, so Psychic is going to do absolutely nothing to it. Uh, I was also meant to X attack there, and I accidentally scalded, but it worked out in my favor. All right, now it's time for Pika Pow. Now that Pikachu is actually in the party. Yeah, one thing that I can be slightly annoying about Mewtwo sometimes is that it has recovered, and it doesn't go for it a lot, but it occasionally will. Yeah, that's why you keep feeding X items into the Gyarados. Um, if you uh, like as it's recovering you just keep pumping X items in and eventually you can do more damage than the recover does or th than the recover heals alright so it looks like I should have four five evolutions to do one two three four five yeah um four just kidding, because the Bulbasaur is currently evolving. So this is the guy right here that'll give you the diploma. All right, so let me rapid ash there because that way, um, don't have to worry about that. Okay, and then gloom to my party, Growlithe, uh, Cloyster, and Pikachu. Okay. Yeah, that's one thing I don't know if we ever mentioned before, but if you are riding a ride Pokemon, you actually can't trade it. Yeah. The game physically won't let you. So that's so, why I... Oh, yeah, go ahead. 
Yeah, so that's why Etiquette just went for Rapidash instead of Aerodactyl as the ride. Well, among other reasons. <laughs> but not being in the sky is a good one, too. Alright, I'm just going to quickly do my evolutions here. So Mewtwo, in my opinion, is harder to catch than the legendary birds are, which is why I started using the Master Ball on that. You could make an argument for, like, Zapdos to... I would say Zapdos is the one you absolutely should not use the Master Ball on. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Because Zapdos moves around a lot, but... Or, like, when it moves, it, like, moves really quickly and darts all over the place. But I find that Zapdos is the one I get excellent throws on the most commonly. All right, that's fair. Because, like, it'll move and then it'll stop and it'll kind of be in a more stable place for a while. Like, the, the Articuno likes to just move side to side constantly. And Moltres kind of likes to do that, too. Right. But Zapdos, it'll just, like, dart over to the left or dart back to the center and then stay there for a few seconds. You actually have time to get a throw in without it moving. So I'll go with the opposite of that. I think Zapdos is by far the hardest to catch. Really? <laughs> I do. I think it's like like not only the easiest one, but by far the easiest one. It's also the one that you definitely do not have a Master Ball for. Yeah, yeah. So you have to do it so early. Yeah. I think for me, I've always had the least amount of trouble with Articuno. Um, but... Yeah, I mean, I, I, they're probably all roughly the same in terms of catch rate, so it's just their uh, their behavior in battle is what you're worried about. Yeah. And also Mewtwo's 20 levels higher, which has to factor in. Yeah, for least, sure. A little bit. I found that Mewtwo, in my experience, attacks more, but it's easier to hit excellence on as well. But the attacking more is a big deal, just because you get to throw less balls in general. What just happened? Why is your Pikachu so mad? Whoa. I don't know. What the heck just happened? What did I do? <laughs> I'm sorry, Pikachu. I've never seen oh. this screen before. Was he just teasing me? That's pretty funny. I just like saw the screen go black out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> I was like, what just happened? He, I like, even the freaked out and did a whole, like, electric shock thing. Uh, I'm... Yeah, he... Yeah. I'm in the, uh, the building, by the way. I'm going up to the floor. You already did the evolutions? Yeah. So I'm... Okay. In front of the guy. Communicate. What's our final trade code? No, not nearby player. There we go. Oh, is it a girl Pikachu? I wasn't even paying attention. Yeah, I didn't notice until it got mentioned in chat. Do we have a code? Uh, just use the last one. Alright. No one will notice. I forgot that was my job. No, that's fine. <laughs> just wanted to make sure we were... I wasn't missing something. Alright, now everything's in order, so I should be able to quickly get to things. They're not, like, as ordered as yours are, but... <laughs> Just about done. This will be significantly underestimate still, even with the horrible pincer. Yeah. Pincer was really, like, the only bad thing that happened. Yeah, we... in... Yeah. In general, it's pretty consistent, this category, I think. Yeah, like, we didn't get amazing luck anywhere. I guess you could say the Scyther spawn was pretty good, but, like, in the end, it didn't really matter because you had to sit around and wait for 20 minutes anyways.
Yeah, this will probably be like a 26 or 27, something like that. Not too bad. Which with a 40 minute pincer. <laughs> definitely pretty good. Yeah, we, we've mentioned it a couple times, but um, if anybody is interested in doing this, uh, there's a either with a partner that you have in mind or if you're just looking for somebody, there's a bunch of people that love doing these runs. There's some pretty good guides. The guides are getting better for beginners. So um, definitely recommend this as a, a fun little category to do. You can also always do all obtainable Pokemon if you can't con your friends into doing a five-hour speedrun with you. Yeah. <laughs> or, if you, or if you don't have Pokemon online or something. Yeah, true. Because you do have to have, like, the paid Switch online feature. Oh, to right. Be able to trade. And if you really can't find a partner, just ask Joker. He'll do diploma with anyone and everyone. I want to say Joker has far more spots on the leaderboard than anyone else, right? I think, I think so. so. I think I'm probably second, but I think he has a few more than me. Yeah, that's the kind of weird thing about like two player leaderboards is if you do a if like Kerbis and I do a run and then Kerbis does a run with Jay Ash, like he'll be Kerbis will be on there twice. <laughs> so it's kind of weird to look at, but uh, it uh, it makes sense once you figure out what's going on. Yeah, I think I'm on there six or seven times with different people. Yeah, you are on there six times. I feel like I'm slacking off at only four. <laughs> There's also a category to do diploma by yourself if you have two switches, which I think only etiquette has done. Yep. <laughs> I like don't even want the category to be there. It's just dumb. <laughs> All right, I'll get myself a run on the board etiquette. Heck yeah. Did like, you play both games at once or? No, I, yeah, I basically would play one game, put down those controllers, play the other game, and I would only control both at the same time um, during the trades. Trying but, to control both would be kind of fun, maybe. Like, maybe not I, for such a long run, but. Yeah, what I would wish I wish there was a way to connect one Joy-Con to two Switches, so that way you could do like a true like two games, one controller with it, but... Right. Yeah. Oh, that was X. There would be a lot of fun things available if you didn't have to use Joy-Cons for the game. Yeah, definitely. You don't have to use Joy-Cons, you can use a Pokeball Plus. Uh, yeah, but I... That's... <laughs> yeah. That's even worse. Very bad. <laughs> Not to break my silence, but about how much more time is there? Uh, less Roughly. than... Less than what? Less... Probably like six or seven minutes. Okay, sounds good. We have 11 more trades to do. Yeah. And then it's done. Uh, 13 All more right. trades. Awesome. Let's get two extra. Oh, you're right. 13 trades. Just in general, though, people should run Let's Go. It's yeah. very unique for Pokemon speedrunning, just because of the catching mechanic. Yeah, and there are, there are a lot of great resources, too. A lot of people willing to help out. Um, yeah. It's just a lot of fun. It's a very easy game to get into, and 
fairly hard to master. So I have bad news. You're riding your Kangaskhan? <laughs> yep. I saw you hover over Kangaskhan for a minute, and I'm like, he's riding it, isn't he? <laughs> We were talking about it and everything. <laughs> That's funny. I think this means that technically etiquette finished first. <laughs> oh no! I lost. Oh man. Get all the time in the world. <laughs> The choke of the century. No, because I can still exit out of the last trade menu before him and bring my diploma up first. Ah, oh, darn. Yeah, but we know who was prepared at the end of the run path first. That's what really matters. I can send you two garbage Pokemon right now, so you have to wait. Jinx, Blue Tops. Oh, I didn't check where the next Pokemon I need to go is. Darn. Um, it should be. All right, I think I know where it is. Yeah, joke's on you guys. This was a race the whole time. Everything's a race. <laughs> There's no such thing as friendly collaboration in speedrunning. Cool. The best part about this race is it entirely depends on who exits out of the trade menu first. Yeah. Because you can't get one with you about each other. Half hours. It's all about who can mash B the, the best. Well, you can't mash B too much, though, because to exit the trade, you have to press A. True. See, there's so much finesse. Those last five seconds of the run are really tough. Yeah, co-op 153 with Mel Metal, where you have to record yourself going out on Pokemon Go in the middle of the run and Yo. catching a Meltan. Uh, Also, we've talked about it before, but I wonder how much, like, internet connection RNG impacts the run. Oh, yeah. I still want to, like, time it at some point. Uh, time, like, the, the local trades from your solo diploma run. Yeah. And compare it with some of the online diploma runs and see if there's actually a big difference. The next big in-person marathon. It's just gonna be because that's, all the, that's the next level of optimization, meeting up and doing diploma in the same room with someone. Right. seeing the trades happen on the stream because it's like the way that our screens are and all like the the pipes that the, the pokeball travels through are almost right lined up with each other it's kind of funny
All right, so you should have two things left to get from me, right? After this one. Did you already send me Lickitung? I sent it on one of the last two trades, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know I was two ahead, so I trust that. I'm going to hold Muck hostage until you send me everything. the all attainable Pokemon record, by the way. Oh, no. Again. We're worse than one person. We have to catch more Pokemon, though. You do. You got an I... extra 15. This run didn't have any shinies, did it? Nope. Not a single no, one. No shinies. That's actually pretty... Uh, Well, I wouldn't say it was likely for us to get a shiny, but it was not a very bad chance. And we just didn't get one. I would say I probably see shinies about a third of the time. Or have someone see it that I do this, maybe. That seems about right. Maybe not a third. Maybe it's a little bit less than that. Like, I was going to say probably around, like, one out of every ten times I get a, uh, a shiny in a solo run. So, I mean... The odds, if those are true odds, then the odds that one of us would find it would be like right around 20%. So it's not too yeah. far off. That sounds probably about right. All right. Now I got to quit the trade and do my dismount of shame. Yep. I'm holding Muck hostage until I get the Kangaskhan. <laughs> Oh wow! I was I didn't even have a chance to hit B on that one. I'm just too good. Oh, All let's right. do the second code this time. Yeah, Curvis didn't have a dex entry there because you sent him something you'd already sent. Oh, that's right. That's a good call. Hey, 150 right. across the board. Now's the time to find out. One of us only has 149. Yeah. All right, so for Ranger, the time is going to be when the diploma appears on both screens. So should be pretty, pretty soon, within a minute. OK. Yeah, I got out. All right, and time for me. I think mine loaded before yours after the trade. No, that's not fair. Um, yeah, Kerbis was a five twenty eight oh eight, and I <sighs> think etiquette was like a five twenty eight ten or twelve. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> How did so he even win? though, even he though etiquette clearly was the winner here, Kerbis did officially oh, win that. Tapes don't lie. I think I won. <laughs> All right, that's a. I'm gonna get a screenshot of this. This is yeah, just, there, like, with the layout. It's so cool. With the filled out trackers and the diplomas on screen. That's good that's, stuff. I like that. To be honest, this layout looks absolutely amazing, and. Well, it just fits the layout perfectly. Yeah, who made the layouts? Uh, Retro... I believe Retro Tato. Yeah, By the way, if you guys are following Orbit. Retro Tato, what's up? Uh, it was Retro Tato and Orbit did them. Retro Tato and Orbit. Yeah. If you are following them, please go follow them. They are absolutely incredible people, and they helped so much with this preparation for this event, too. Yeah, it looks good. They did a nice job. And of course, 
please go follow Kerbis and Etiquette. They are amazing streamers and so much fun to watch all the time. Follow Jay Ash too. He's he's one of the best J Let's Go oh, runners as well. Jay Ash, please, you need to follow him too. Yeah. Um, all right. Yeah, I don't really have much to say. Just uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks for having me. Uh, big thanks to the the whole committee running the marathon. Uh, I'm a bit less involved than I have been in the past, uh, and they've really stepped it up and done done everything. Like it's like I'm not even there. So uh, big thanks to them. And yeah, yep. thanks, thanks, Kerbis, for agreeing to do this. <laughs> yep, I love Diploma. Uh, thanks for letting us show Let's Go at its best. Thank you guys for showing a game that definitely deserves some more credit in the in the uh, community. Hundred percent. All right, we will be taking a quick transmission break, and we will be back with Pokemon Emerald Any Percent with Amoeba and uh, Startaria as well. All right, we will see you guys in a few minutes.